Hey, welcome once again to HeroQuest fans. We are live on Twitch. We're not live on YouTube. Today is HeroQuest day. And so everybody's obsessed with Rise of the Dread Moon. But we are doing other things. I think I've gotten my share and I'm a little tired. That's why I started the stream early. Normally we start at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on a Saturday. But we do stream every Saturday if we can. We're still playing uh, the Frozen Horror, but we're on the last quest. But I would say there's probably at least a good another two sessions left. So if you want to come along with us on this journey, you'd be more than welcome. Glad I caught you then. I'm GMT and it's almost bedtime. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, if you had questions about Rise of the Dread Moon, you can ask away. Otherwise, we should get started. I just need somebody to somebody to fight here. So we've got the Barbarian, the Rogue, the Elf, the Wizard, or Alchemist, as he is officially canonized as, which I think is great, in Rise of the Dread Moon. He is a full-fledged Alchemist. And we've got the Guardian Knight. For our heroes and we've got their body points displayed on the screen there to the right and i need to fix my cameras there's always one camera that just doesn't want to behave it's not that one that one's pretty good actually yeah that's supposed to be there that's what we we do our uh, dice rolls but i see what you mean it needs to be uh adjusted there we go so like that's what we do for the dice rolls thank you dread pirate Dan yeah your gold coins are building up the longer you lurk so some people have been lurking for a long time and they have a lot of gold Yeah. Just out of curiosity, are you joining us on a phone or are you like on a desktop computer? Because that does make a difference in the experience, what people have told me. So that works. Yeah. Same here. I think it's easier. Jacer, who is a frequent player on our streams, he uses a phone. And it's kind of tricky, but he's he's proven that it's it's possible to do. Let's still have a good time. All right, looks like we got a pretty good connection. So, Dread Pirate Dan, do you wanna you wanna control a hero or two? I mean, at this point, you'd be controlling all five. I realize it's a lot to ask of you, but do you want at least control one, or do you just want to wait? Let's see who do we else have here in the chat? Count Cogpox is here. Welcome back. He and I were having a nice chat before this all started. I think he's uh, with family, so he's not able to play there. Yeah, you can watch for a bit. Well, <clears throat> as we often do while we wait for heroes. Cheers, Dead Gamer. I want to bring up Dead Gamer because... So there's a guy who goes by the moniker Dead Gamer. So he likes dead games. He's not dead. But... Uh, he likes tabletop gaming, and he's a guy on YouTube, cool guy. Um, when the HeroQuest Mythic box was coming out, and we were all waiting for it, like a lot of us felt that Hasbro Avalon Hill hadn't done enough to really show us like what was in the box and what it was really like, what the quests were like, and all that kind of stuff. And so we all kind of agreed, like, okay, we're gonna forfeit our uh, refund by doing a, a fan unboxing to show the community. Well, Dead Gamer, he stepped up. I mean, there was another guy, Cosmic Tavern, who I think had the first fan unboxing where he was showing like every card and he would admit it. He's like, I don't know much about this game, but because I think when Cosmic Tavern was a kid, he, he played with the pieces, but he didn't actually play the game. But he was just, like showing every card and showing all the miniatures. It's like, what do you think? <laughs> you know, it's really great. But what I wanted to know was the next 
deep level, which is, okay, what is, what is actually in the quest book? Like, has anything changed? Like, even the most minute change. So Dead Gamer, he sent me videos where he painstakingly went through page after page because he got his before me. And so he was showing, like, every page. And so I'm, like, freeze framing it, like, comparing it. It's like, okay, hardly anything's changed. But, man, that was so helpful. And I'm going to be doing the same thing with Rise of the Dread Moon for some people, privately, of course, uh, who haven't bought it yet but really want to know that information. So I'm happy to return that favor. Pay it forward. So as I often say when I take a drink, cheers, dead gamer. Because fans look out for each other. We help each other out with information. Because, yeah, I mean, Avalon Hill has been really cool to us. Like, I'm not a partner or affiliate with them in any way. So if I think their product sucks, I'm going to say so. Like, that's my thing. But they have done a lot since the since the start when we all complained that the company was so tight-lipped like they they reach out to us they talk to us they tell us as much as they can they even put little in jokes in their uh, advertising and in their game i mean i was finding just all kinds of little easter eggs in this rise of the dread moon so i haven't played it yet but so far what i've seen it looks like they've listened to the feedback that they've been getting so even though they're writing a new adventure and they're putting new stuff in it which troubles some people i think it it's simple enough that it doesn't detract from the overall game of course the proof of that is going to be how do the game sessions actually go my concern was people are going to get choice paralysis because you're going to have four choices to make each time or three choices like do i do this potion this potion or that potion or do i save it until later or do i use it now whereas before it was just one choice you know of course you use it if you have it use it so i was kind of concerned about that some other people were too i it doesn't look to be much of an issue and it doesn't look like they've tinkered with the game too much they mostly use gimmicks now i've i just had an interesting discussion on the hero quest fans discord which i encourage you to visit where I, when i use the term gimmick like not everybody uses the term the same way i use it more like in the pro wrestling sense where like they say, oh, that's a gimmick table, meaning it has a special feature that it breaks more easily. Or this is a wrestler's gimmick, like his character that creates interest. Like I use that when I say like a quest has a gimmick. So like there's the Castle of Mystery where you teleport through the through the doors. That's a gimmick. It's a cool, interesting little quirk that only that quest has. Or maybe another uh, gimmick would be, oh, the fact that the Yeti can grab you. Like, I think there's another term, uh, there's another sense in the term gimmick is used, like, when sales, like, saying, like, oh, someone tricked you, saying, like, oh, it's, you know, it, it's so easy to use, and then you use it, and it falls apart. It's like, okay, it's really not that good. You know, it's it's not what it, it doesn't live up to the, to the hype. That's not how I'm using the sense of gimmick. I'm using it in a positive sense. I'm saying I like the fact that, traditionally hero quest rather than just giving us like 10 quests that are all pretty much the same you know you're just wading through monsters and getting gold like there's actually interesting little things so like stephen baker would put like little story bits like you you unravel more of the mystery as you go into different rooms or there's atmospheric things that happen or there's like underwater passages or there's darkness you know with some of these like the dub doug hopkins quests he put little gimmicks in there so that's that's what I mean when I say gimmicks for Hero Quest. I think that's something that's that's like the best of Hero Quest is that every quest shows that there's some unique feature, which probably de drives the developers of the companion app crazy because they have to code that into a, a free app. Which when's when's the when's the companion app version of Rise of the Dread Moon gonna come out? Like two months from now. So. I can just imagine them just like really crunching on this one, just trying to get it get it finished, and get it done right. But it, it looks so far, I'm I'm pleased with what I I see. But it looks like they definitely put gimmicks into this one. So just about every quest has something. There's either story that gets developed, like this Nightfall quest, because I kind of as I was looking through the spoilers, I was thinking they don't really tell you a lot. I mean, they tell you a lot about the cadre of the Raven's Veil and like recruiting the mercenaries. Like that's pretty tight. But there's like characters that seem to kind of come out of nowhere. And I suppose they do that in fantasy. Like, oh, crap, there's a huge monster. We've got to fight that monster now. Like, you know, no time to explain. <laughs> Just fight the monster, you know. But 
in little ways they're developing the lore so you'll be playing through a quest and so it's not just mentor telling you this long story at the start like if anybody has seen prophecy of teller or will be seeing it soon you flip the page and there's a whole bunch of there's a paragraph of information from mentor dropped on you and, and in, inside the quest there's sentences of stuff rather than just oh this room contains you know a gargoyle it's like lots of stuff so there's all this story stuff but a lot of people like that it's like you know you've you've crushed enough monsters it it uh you want to hear some more of that but some of the quests don't have that but instead what they'll have is the they have the little plaza where you've got to put your disguise on and you got to talk to people it's like okay that's a cool gimmick or you know you've got your hideout where it's like your miniature between quest thing like there's no time to go shopping but you're still shopping you're just doing it in a room in the quest it's like okay seems a little uh more on the fly but anyway i i've spoiled a lot of the stuff for myself but i i haven't i mean i didn't have time or the energy to read every single word and think about it deeply and then try to rearrange it in my head but so far i'm impressed I mean, I'll tell you a year from now if it was a good pack, but it has it has all the feelings of a good pack, and it doesn't look like they overblew the difficulty. I mean, the monster body points vary from like the 20s to the 60s, but compare that to Frozen Horror: Mage of the Mirror, where you'd be fighting like 80 body points of monsters, or like over 100. I think like 120 is the most, and that's not even counting like you know the double war bears or whatever, where the uh, wandering monsters which they have not gone heavy on so it's it looks like a hard quest pack you've got some tough monsters but it's not over the top but still i think most of us were thinking that you probably don't want to start with basic heroes you probably want to have heroes that have some some armor and some strong weapons and some healing potions at the start not like it would be a guaranteed loss but it would be very very like white knuckle sounds like a cool community yeah, we try to be pretty laid back. I mean, we have some lively discussions. I mean, don't ask people about the crossbow. They'll have a big argument about it or what order you should play the quests in. <laughs> like, why should that matter? But it matters to some people and we just talk about it forever. We've not looked too much into the re-release, not heard anything about the expansion quest. Well, Dread Pirate Dan, uh, there's a couple ways you can learn about it if you want. You can go to a place called Yield In. Uh, y e o l d e i n n dot com has a lot of information. The forum is still pretty active. It's old school community, and our Hero Quest fans Discord. I mean, there's a lot of people to talk about painting. There's a lot of people to talk about the latest release, and then I play games <laughs> every weekend. And there's nothing stopping other people from doing the same thing. It's just, I think it's just kind of ended up being. It started as a vanity project for my own thing, and it's kind of grown, and I appreciate that. All kinds of people hang out. It's fun. It's unofficial. Count God Pox says, I've always really appreciated that with Avalon Hill. Kudos points to them for being active with the community. Keeps me pumped and engaged for the series. Well, especially in contrast to, I hate to say it, well, not to open that whole can of worms, but the Hasbro umbrella has all these other companies. And you think about like Wizards of the Coast, like how often they're like squabbling with their fans over stuff. Like, I'm so glad that we don't have that same drama in our community. And maybe it's just because it's so small and it hasn't been, like, reactivated for very long. Maybe as it gets bigger and more bloated, like, that'll just inevitably happen. But it just it just feels so much more mature and laid back. And maybe, I don't know, I've never been, like, the manager of a company, so I couldn't tell you what they're doing wrong with those other divisions, but... Whatever they're doing with Avalon Hill now, it seems to be working. And I think as long as they stay, like, humble, they don't ever think, well, we just know, we know better than everyone else, and we can just talk down to the fans. As long as they don't get to that stage, or that there's so much money involved that they just stop caring about their actual customers and just want to, like, milk us for everything they can get from us. Like, as long as they don't get to that point, then I think, I think we're in good hands. Because the community will last. I mean, the thing is, they can't bully us because the community will last no matter what. They could stop producing all Hero Quests today, and we would go for another 30 years without them. That's just a fact. You know? Because all the people that grew up with Hero Quest, they've gotten their kids interested in it. It's going to continue on. 
we're, we're never going to be like, oh, I don't have an app, so I can't play this game. No. Of course, of course you can. You were fine without it before. So, thanks to Dubai Montalto on the Discord for posting the updated quest order in chat. Yeah, Dubai Montalto's a cool guy. He's done a lot of... He's on top of a lot of new stuff. Lately, Verg has been really on top of things, too. I've really appreciated his updates. And Sikashem, Leerlek, um, several other people that have posted stuff. Hispazargon. I always leave out one or two people, and I don't mean to do that. I mean, there's some really good insights. But yeah, just something appears on Twitter or Instagram, and boom, we've got it. You know, I'm 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 typing it out, and I, I re hit refresh, and somebody else has already posted it. It's like, <laughs> yes, good job, great reporting. Yeah, yeah, the Nightfall quest. So it looks like the Sir Ragnar story is developed a little bit more in there. So yes, for anybody who's wondering, the stuff about Sir Ragnar from the European. Uh, Return of the Witchlord is basically reincorporated. But I think what they're trying to do is do it in a more satisfying way. And it's not 100%, but I do need to read it more in depth. But I think I think it's gone in a good direction. Like, it could have been, like, just a total disaster. So I still choose to think of Sir Ragnar as a hero, just like I s still choose to think of Zargon as the angry looking white bearded guy in the red and black cape with the big book in his hand so i have my own impression about hero quest and that can't be shaken but i still appreciate these official plot lines you know as opposed to like when they make a new star wars film and i watch it and go that it wasn't star wars <laughs> you know <laughs> sad But this isn't the rant cast. This is HeroQuest fans. Yeah, so like I said, I've got I've got Rise of the Dread Moon. I could play it right now with you, but I feel like maybe I need, just need to kind of let it digest a little bit and then just keep playing this. Because we could have two different campaigns going on at the same time, but I mean this this week has been rough. Like I don't normally stream this much. And I mean I've done stuff with Strange Bus and, and the Rant Cast and I've been doing this play test, so it's a lot. I mean, some people can just stream for hours and hours and hours. I, At a certain point, I have to take a rest. I can't do it week after week. Get too old. Just kidding. Uh, Solar 1927 is here and Zero Vero. And don't worry, I'll check the bot lists. I think there was one guy, I accused him of being a bot and he wasn't. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't ban him or something. Yeah, Twitch bots are just kind of a perennial problem. Just don't uh, don't let them build up in your in your uh, chat queue. They can cause problems down the line. Trust me, from experience. All right, I got Resos here. So happy Hero Quest Day! I don't know if they're gonna do this every every year, but it is it is kind of a special occasion. I mean, they did release this pack, and it was their chance to show to the world, not just to you know some crowdfunding people on HasLab to show to the world, hey, we are capable of making like a new quest pack that people will like and adding content to the game. It's not just a rehash or a remix of what's already existed. I mean, they're actually adding new stuff to it and not having those nostalgia goggles to kind of like hide behind or protect them because I think this nostalgia has worked in their favor quite a bit. Like people have been very forgiving of the flaws in the last two packs because they were from 1992. Like people wanted those, they wanted the Frozen Horror and Mage of the Mirror so bad because it was the one that got away that they could accept the fact that it had problems. And they did, Avalon Hill did their best to fix that up with Into the Northland Digital Quest and then revising the Elf Quest pack in the, you know, in the box. Solar Knight to 27 says, just lurking here, doing some HeroQuest painting, but happy HeroQuest Day, everyone. Yeah, a lot of people do that for my stream. I don't mind. I do it with other people's streams, too. I get my paints out. I'll be listening to Wicked Mini Paintings, uh, Wicked Mini Painting, or um, I forget now. He's changed the name a couple of times, but PSK Studio, 
PSK Knucklehead, uh, his his uh, painting streams for like mental health. Um, Gareth Gareth Hardmar, another good one. There's a couple other people that I've added more recently, but yeah, there's a lot of good painters out there. Um, or people that are, I mean, it seems like everybody's a better painter than I am, but yeah, just, uh, just watching them and asking them questions occasionally, but are just talking trash and then, uh, doing your own thing. But yeah, so I guess I'll just kind of start off here. I figured people would be really distracted, but these different streams, I mean, um, nights around the table, they did a good job of trying to like interact with the the chat while they're playing a fairly simple quest you know rescue of sir ragnar i think the elven prospector people they so meeple the people they actually pre-recorded because that's a that's a really difficult and long quest i mean i haven't played it but i've read it, it enough that i know that that's not one that you're going to finish early unless everybody just gets slaughtered which could very well happen so they pre-recorded that so they were going to interact with people in chat and then I looked at shelf side game and it was it was live but you could tell they were just engrossed in the game like they were just trying to do their own thing we try to do an interactive thing and i know it's not always perfect but i just don't feel like i need to stop the stream and go watch their thing or like paula like she's gonna do her stream and that's gonna be great if people i understand if people leave to, to go watch their stuff because i'm not talking rise of the dread moon and if you want that information, I mean, you can watch my unboxing video, but after that, what do you do? You go check out someone else's stream. I understand. Count Cogpox says, I've been praying to the Dread Moon. We get a Wizards of Zargon expansion in the near future. Well, I don't think you need to do that because Encarmine, who is Chris Nato, the head guy over at Avalon Hill Hasbro Gaming, He's made it clear that they have all the legacy expansions. They have the rights to everything. Now, I think Amalgamash said this already, so I can say it, but the only concern that they had was that maybe Joe Manganello may or may not want Crypt of Professional Darkness as a retail product. So I guess because he was a guest writer, he has some say in that matter. But see, I don't know what it would be. Like, is he embarrassed about it or he wants more money or they just haven't asked him yet or they don't want to do it so they don't want to ask him and then have to pay him royalties for it i don't know how that works but there's definitely a lot of people out there that want all the mythic stuff in retail and i'm one of them like i want that for you guys not because i think that they are the greatest quests that have ever existed because they're just quests you know some of them are good some of them are okay you know but because there's scalpers out there making hundreds thousands of dollars basically ripping people off selling them bits and pieces of the mythic set still to this day and hasbro is probably kicking themselves thinking like we could be making some of that money by selling it in retail so you're never going to please everybody but i think it would be great if they had that but i think if you had to ask chris nato his intention would also be for all the European stuff to be released, all the mythic stuff to be released. Now, when it comes to stuff like the White Dwarf magazine quests or the Dave Morris quests, like you probably have to get permission from those individual authors to release them. But I was kind of thinking to myself, some of those, like, okay, yes, you could get on eBay and buy a used, like, copy, an old copy of White Dwarf magazine to play, you know, the Eyes of Chaos. But you could also find a scan of it online. I mean, they're not seeing any money from those magazines anymore. I mean, only the new issues. So you could look at it this way. Like, if they were to re-release that stuff, what they would probably do is just release it as a digital quest. Just to bring awareness to it again. Maybe make a couple tweaks to the graphics, you know, or the notes so that it makes more sense with the new system. I mean, because hardly anything has changed, but some of that stuff, I mean, it was released under the European rules or the Japanese rules. And so it's not going to be exactly the same. So something that might have been easy before is going to be hard or it was hard and it'll be easy or not make sense. So they'll definitely have to do some tweaking. Hey, thanks, Polsky. 
Good old comrade Polsky. On Hero Quest Day, banning bots. So zero Vero was a was a bot. Should have guessed. Yeah, so I have no doubt that we will see Wizards of Zargon or Wizards of Morkar in some form. Now they could just release it straight up. They could release, you know, a, a nostalgic European version rule edition because after all that D and D fiasco, I mean, I'm not a legal scholar, but I feel like I know a little bit more. It's like you can't copyright rules, so you could just rewrite, you know, the rules but keep the same mechanics and say, okay, well, when you play Wizards of Morkar, here's how you play it. The only problem is all the people on this side of the pond would be confused. I mean, I guess the European version was more widespread. Like, all of us in North America, so Canada, United States, Mexico, we had one rule set. Japan had another rule set. But pretty much all the other countries were based on the European rule set. So first edition, second edition. So they would be fine, but we would be confused. You'd be like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> and you'd have fans who would be like converting it, like Phoenix did, converting it to the North American rules. So what they could do is just take the step themselves and just rewrite the rules and people who don't like that could just play it the original way just like you can play classic hero quest right now you just have to make just a couple adjustments and you've done it you know it's like throw out the hand axe throw out the bracers you know ignore the the guardian knight whatever so they've also said we have everything when it comes to it's like oh do you have the do you have the drafts of the dwarf quest pack and the the wizard notes the wizard quest pack we have everything we have everything <laughs> so they've got all that stuff they own it they have the right to it so if that's the case i think it's just a matter of until it's actually a done deal they can't say anything you know what i mean they want to but it all just depends on does hero quest continue to be profitable does Hasbro continue to approve their budget or whatever they do, you know, sign off on their projects? Because they can't, my impression is they can't just do whatever they want. Like as an independent company, they're a subsidiary of Hasbro Gaming. So as long as whoever signs it off on it says, sure, go ahead, do that thing. And they, the, then they can do it. And they've got three projects going. So Rise of the Dread Moon is done in on store shelves. Prophecy of Teller is coming soon. What's the third project? I don't know. And then there'll be a fourth project. Some of the hints were about ogres. So a lot of us were thinking against the ogre horde. And some of us were speculating that Wizards of Morkar is so small, it's only five quests, that it would be combined somehow with against the ogre horde, because the story follows like straight into the to the from one to the other. But on the other hand, I mean Wizards of Morkar does add a lot of new mechanics that against the Ogre Horde doesn't have. So it would be kind of interesting to see if they really did do a double pack, like what it would be like. You could do it. It could be done. And fans have done it. So ogres, but of course they could have just been referring to the ogres from the uh, Mage of the Mirror. But the intention was, so when they were making those four quest packs, Barbarian, Elf, Dwarf, Wizard, they were taking the assets, the tiles, the cards, the miniatures from those European packs, bringing them over to the States, knowing that players here probably hadn't seen that stuff. And they were going to use all of them. So you were going to see the Ogre Chieftain and the Ogre Lord and the Ogre Champion in the Dwarf Quest Pack. You were going to see like new designs for new monsters. They were going to have Rat Men and like... Uh, what did they call them? Rock moles. They look like these like rhinoceros creatures. And there was dwarves, evil dwarves, female dwarves. Well, there was female versions of all the heroes. And there were going to be giant spiders and like these caterpillar looking things. And uh, I think like golems, not golem, golems, like the big clay creatures. So there's going to be all kinds of stuff. There's going to be new spells. And of course, they were following a template that we already saw in Mage of the Mirror and uh, Frozen Horror. So it was going to be, you know, the Alchemist Shop with the four potions, three for one hero, uh, three solo quests, a female version of, of that hero, artifacts that only they could use, a storyline focused on their homeland and their lore, 
to develop it further. And then unique monsters with gimmicks. Using the term gimmick again. Ten quests. Uh, the last, uh, yeah, the seven to ten would be group quests, and the last two would be a two-parter. Like, that was the template. The problem is, and we assume that what had happened is they basically knew the project was dying or that the funding was drying up or that things were running down. So they just were just going to try to release something rather than not release anything. So the Barbarian Quest Pack was done first, we think. The Elf Quest Pack was finished, and then that was it. Wizard Quest Pack was like half done. Dwarf Quest Pack was maybe a third done. I, I've I've heard different figures. Like I guess you could just guess based on the notes, but like twenty percent, twenty five percent, thirty percent done, fifty percent done, as opposed to like, well, I guess yeah, the wizard pack was probably make eighty or ninety percent done. But anyway, those dwarf those uh, draft notes are out there, and that's that's why I've, a lot of the house rules that I use for Frozen Horror are based on what I've read about the. Um, frozen horror i mean not everything that was put into into the northlands for the modern version is from those draft notes but i think we all know that they consulted those notes when they were making the updates now they were also listening to what fans were saying but yeah i think they have a full intention to release all that stuff when will it happen don't know what form will it take don't know Uh, Count Cogpox says, has there been any mention from Avalon Hill about new character release schedules? Are they going to stick to releasing a new character or mythic tier alternate release between or with new expansion packs? Well, see, I thought that's what they were going to do. I thought that was they were establishing a pattern. Like it was going to be a small um, original release, like the Guardian Knight, and then a bigger legacy release. Like Mage of the Mirror. Like it was just going to alternate. But then they decided to make sure everything was retail. And went did Rise of the Dread Moon. And I think N. Carmine once said something like, well, wouldn't you just want to see new content? Like why would you want to see that other stuff? So I think they're still feeling it out. So I don't know what their plan is. I really don't. I mean, we know Prophecy of Teller is coming out. And that clearly is a mythic thing. But is... Are they going to cram all that mythic stuff into one box? Or is it just going to be that quest and nothing else from the mythic tier? Is it going to be like new extras? I mean, everybody's kind of speculating, oh, there'll be some extras. I mean, if they're using a small box, like Keller's Keep, Return of the Witchlord uses, that can't hold as much stuff as like a Mage of the Mirror size box. But I was thinking they actually could cram all of the stretch goal figures except maybe the dragon in there if they wanted to if they're able to do that i mean i kind of hope that okay yeah you you'd give us a female zombie but it would be like a cooler sculpt than what we got and you could still say it's a female zombie with a machete or whatever i like both alternating them is not a bad idea well i always use the example of uh disney lucasfilm with star wars and i think they've done it they have done a terrible job with Star Wars. But their idea was, like, every other year, you would get a new episode of Star Wars. Like a new movie. Well, they were all new, but you would get one that was set in, like, the future, or the present of Star Wars, and then you'd get a throwback movie. You'd be like, oh yeah, this one's about Han Solo, or this one's about Boba Fett, or this one's about the Rebellion before A New Hope or something. And so it was going to go back and forth, and it was going to be like, okay, they're drawing in new fans with a new story, and they're also like placating like old fans who want to reminisce about the old lore. So, I mean, that sounds like kind of a cool strategy. Now, they did a terrible job of it, but with Avalon Hill, it's like, okay, yeah. They re-release uh, polished-up versions of, of old classics, you know, or maybe obscure stuff from back in the day, and brand new stuff. I mean, eventually they'll run out of legacy stuff. But at one point they said, you know, they're committed until 2026. Well, it's 2023, so that's three three more years. So two releases a year, so we got six releases. We just had one, so we've got five more left. Is that how it goes? But maybe it's not that cut and dried. And, you know, the Guardian Knight 
turned out to be a big fiasco, but I mean, like the Rogue Air of Elithorn, it was a small pack. And all these digital quests that come out, like I was thinking there'll be a digital quest every time. But as Hispazargon points out for Return of the Witchlord, they didn't have a special quest. They just had Forsaken Tunnels of Zorzel, I guess as a bridge between them. And we didn't get any kind of special quest for Mage of the Mirror. I mean, we got one for Rise of the Dread Moon. So it seems like they're kind of making up as they go along. So I don't know what their current plan is. It'd be nice if they told us, but until they do, who knows? But no, I haven't heard anything special uh, otherwise. Yeah, so after Prophecy of Teller, I have no idea what they're doing. But they have talked about ogres, which made me think against the Ogre Horde. And I think they've dropped other hints too, like, oh, we need to show some love for some European packs from the 90s. Like, oh, are there still some content out there from the 90s left? You know, that kind of thing. We have everything. So I think they want to do it, but we just have to wait until it happens. And that was the original criticism, which was that, you know, they, they play their cards so close to the vest. They're so tight-lipped about this stuff. It seems like they're talking to us more. It isn't just really cryptic things on Twitter. Like, they're actually talking to us. They have their own Discord. I mean, I'll, I post questions... Uh, to like especially Avalon Bill over there and I get an answer pretty quickly you know even if it's an answer I don't like it's it's still an answer whereas before that you just go for like a year wondering hmm I wonder what they're doing you know I signed up for the email list and I only got two emails remember that <laughs> so yeah so they're getting better at communicating with us but I think the fact that they're not saying it means they're not able to say it Either because it's a done deal and it's really happening, which makes you think they'd start dropping hints that it's really going to happen, or they'd just shut up about it or deny it. You know, there'd be something. It wouldn't. They wouldn't just be silent, completely silent. So the fact that they are dropping hints and not shooting the stuff down makes me think it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. But I don't know what order. All right. Well... We've got uh, Diavolic898 is with us. So the question is, uh, there's four of us in the chat and then myself. Does anybody want to control a hero? Because I've just been talking Rise of the Dread Moon. I mean, do we want to have a game today? Is everybody too tired out with all the running around in the news and watching other streams? Because I've got a whole quest here. But the thing is, we've been hitting you know, a tipping point with this quest. I mean, we've got the Barbarian here in this doorway, and he's got his snowshoes of speed, so he's not able to slip on that ice. And there's an evil swordsman in this room. They've just discovered this room. And, of course, there's a, a closed door here. They're still looking for the crystal key. They haven't found the crystal key. Once they get the crystal key, they got to go back to the stairway right here. Which goes into quest 9. And don't worry, when the board resets, the monsters that were killed don't come back. Only the monsters that are still there are still there. Oops. <laughs> I let slip. There are some, some monsters that were not, uh, were not finished off. Now we've got a couple traps that you can easily go around. But for now, we've got two fronts, which is always a bad idea. Don't split the party, right? So the wizard or the alchemist and the barbarian over here... But then all the way over here, they discovered a bottomless pit, this icy crevice, which is not slippery, but if you try to jump this and you fail, guess what? You fall to your death. You're gone. And so the, the Guardian Knight is here waiting to decide what to do. And then the Rogue Air of Elithorn is right here. And if you look up a ways, there's the elf. But in this room... There is a doorway on the other side. We've got these two evil crossbowmen. So they got to figure out what they're going to do. Are they going to go this way or this other way? Because they got to get that crystal key. So we could probably take at least, I mean, it'd be nice if we had five heroes. But if we had just two players, we could uh, split split up the party. One person could control 
maybe these two and the other could control the other two but once they get to that final battle I mean I want to be awake for that one because I've been uh, biding my time and I'm kind of ready to get down to business but it would be nice to start that one fresh so we've kind of been ending up on Zargon's turn a lot in fact if it is my turn I could just take my turn, but the problem is, if we don't have any heroes, no one's going to be able to respond. So do we have any heroes tonight? I would play, but I'm watching my kids at the moment. See, you got to bring them to the table. I'm just kidding. <laughs> if, if they're not a certain age, I, I understand. Totally. Dad duty comes first. Well, I can always keep talking about Rise of the Dread Moon. I mean, I could just keep talking about that for a couple hours easily enough. So I already did my unboxing. Does anybody have any questions about that set? We pretty much answered everything, I think. I mean, everybody was wondering about certain things. You know, what do the miniatures look like? We've seen those. What's on the underside of the uh, Dread Wraith? Well, we know it's the the black shield symbol, just like the a smaller version of the one that was on the underside of the Frozen Horror miniature, which you'd never see during combat. It's just there. It just looks cool. We know about Sir Ragnar. We know about the crafting, the alchemy system, how that works. One thing I'm not as clear on is how the disguise system works. Like, I understand that the mercenaries are always disguised. But when the heroes, I guess they just say, okay, I'm going in disguise. Like, when you go to the plaza. And if you happen to use a weapon other than, I think, a dagger or a short sword, you reveal yourself. And you have to, like, take off your armor, except for bracers or cloak. And you can't use any spells. So I guess maybe even if you heal yourself, all of a sudden any monsters in the area who are also in disguise will see, like, be activated or triggered. So it's kind of a quasi-RPG light thing. And some of the... There's, like, unidentified purple... Well, purple for Zargon, but I mean... There's, like, certain, like, little tiles that you place that are, like... It could be a good guy, it could be a bad guy, you don't know. So it's like, well, do you just randomly attack people hoping that they're monsters? Does that hurt your reputation? So it's kind of a quest by quest thing and, and I have to read more about it. But that part kind of intrigues me because that's that's a gimmick, but it sp spans several quests. Like almost every quest has that in there somewhere, but it's just one room. So you go into one room, it's like, okay, you're in the plaza area. So there's friendlies. You can't just attack civilians. You know, you, so there's rules of engagement you got to follow in that area. But then the rest of the quest is just a standard quest. But then you get to the hideout. Okay, we know what that is. Where you can do the safe treasure search and roll your healing and do one treasure search and do your crafting in peace. Because I think you can do crafting even if there's monsters everywhere. Like there could be a battle going on and you just happen to have an alchemist bench because you're not searching for treasure that requires monsters to be not present. So you could just, okay, I'll let me just try to craft some stuff. Like, why aren't you helping fight? Like, <laughs> cause you're using up your turn doing that. Well, how can we carry on and get more cards? Or will further expansions replace it with new crafting mechanics? See, they could do either one. Do they plan to expand it? Well, right now, I see it like this. So, with the Frozen Horror, they gave us the 12 mercenaries. So, they doubled the number of mercenaries, which was a good thing. I'm glad they did that. And they probably didn't realize what they were doing at the start. They probably just thought, well, we don't have bolt-on weapons, so we got to have, you know, three of each of the four. And so, we ended up with 12. But that was a quick fix for Mage of the Mirror, too, because they said, well, if you happen to own both, go ahead and use those mercenaries in Mage of the Mirror, because you'll probably need them. So, it's like they were... Without going like the Heroscape route or the Pokemon route or whatever, they're saying, yeah, buy this particular expansion because then you can use its gimmicks in all the other quests to like enhance them and 
replay them with added value or whatever. So just as you can use those mercenaries in multiple quests, you could take these mercenaries, these Raven's Veil vale cadre members, these elven mercenaries, and use them in other quests if you wanted, other expansions. You could take to the alchemy system and use it other places. But would they revise it? I mean, they would have to take up space in another quest book explaining the whole system again because... Well, no, I guess they wouldn't. They would or they wouldn't. So let's say there's a new expansion. They could say, well, if you have Rise of the Dread Moon, you can use the alchemy system here. But they couldn't just assume that, like, tailor the quest to use it because you might not own Rise of the Dread Moon. So then they would have to, like, recreate everything. They'd have to put another alchemy deck in there. You know what I mean? So I think if they were going to do that, they probably would retool it. Say, oh, yes, there's alchemy in this one, too, but it's a different system. Because otherwise, it would just be an optional thing that you could assume that a lot of your customers don't have Rise of the Dread Moon, so they're not going to be able to craft potions and do all that stuff. And so it would have to be fun enough on its own without that. So why would you... You could put a hideout, but it's like one of the features of the hideout wouldn't be used. And you have another hideout tile, so maybe you would use different artwork for it. I mean, that makes sense. But I think a lot of it depends on the feedback. If people just kind of like tolerate it, but don't seem too enthusiastic, why would they do it again? But if people love it, well, maybe they would consider that. Because it just came out. I mean, I think the review, if there was a review embargo, like there is for video games, like that was lifted. And so you're seeing magazines and like online companies like putting out their official, you know, corporate uh, approved reviews. But the real thing is, you know, the sales figures and what fans are saying. So I'm sure they're like listening very carefully to see like, do people accept it? Or do they need to make some changes, some fixes, some improvements? Because maybe they're like really, really close. Or maybe it's just like a smash hit and they're fine. But if they think, well, this is a bad idea, we should go in some other direction. Or, oh, we're so close that we just need to make a few more tweaks in the next version. will be even better. Like I see them making incremental improvements with the build quality. But I mean, even in this Rise of the Dread Moon, I mean, they, they came up, they didn't have to do this. They came. They reprinted the hand axe with the line that it doesn't work with the wizard. Like, why even bother doing that? Well, they did it. So now people wanted that clarification, so there it is. And if they don't like it, they can easily ignore it because you've got two hand axe cards now. <laughs> you know, so there's just like little, little things. So give them your feedback. You know, send them your email. Post in the Avalon Hill Discord. If you use Twitter, I guess, post there. Or Instagram or Facebook or whatever I mean I like the concept a lot and from what I understand reading about the alchemy thing it seems pretty cool now I was kind of like well where's the holy water there's no holy water here of course holy water in this universe is maybe different than what you might imagine it's not like water plus a blessing plus salt maybe I don't know it's okay you've got a sacred plant and that turns into holy water like okay they didn't give you a card, but I mean, you know what it is. So just like with a lot of things like, well, what's Heroic Brew? Well, you can look at the Heroic Brew card and go, oh, OK, that's what it is. You don't necessarily have to have a separate card that reprints the same information again, you know, unless it's changed somehow or you can't rely on people to have it already. But you can assume everybody has a game system. Hey, Strange Bus, welcome. You made it on Hero Quest Day. Welcome, sir. Count Cogpox is asking me questions about Rise of the Dread Moon. So I picked it up at GameStop. Uh, they were really nice. It was their one copy, and I didn't see... There wasn't, like, a line of people, so I didn't have to fight my way through. I didn't have to bribe anybody to get it. Yeah, Strange Bus was with us at the beginning when we started the Frozen Horror. And we haven't actually started this quest yet because we don't have any heroes yet. But maybe now we do. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. But yeah, with all the stuff going on, I started the stream early uh, because I thought we were going to work around the schedule of the other streamers. But honestly, I don't feel like the need for that. I mean, they have bigger audiences than we do. They have their loyal fans. 
those fans are probably not going to come here because we're not doing the same thing they're doing. That's fine. I don't mind. And I don't mind if people go over there and do that that thing. They, they want to interact live. That's cool. I think it's cool that they involved members of the community. I mean, they all seem pretty normal. I mean, sometimes you get these streamers and they're like, everything's like overproduced and it's like they're acting. It's like, okay, that's entertaining, but are they like an actual hero quest fan that i can relate to you know that sort of thing they seem pretty pretty uh pretty legit yeah so um strange bus if you want to be a hero certainly can oh just stopping by cashing ah cashing in some points well right now the party is split and i want to show you something strange bus and i'll answer your question here in a second cogpox so we've got the barbarian over here Barbarian and Wizard. And we're splitting the party. They just discovered this room full of monsters, and they've killed them all except for one. There's an enemy swordsman. But they don't know what dangers are lurking over here, right? There's a whole other room that hasn't been discovered. They're looking for the crystal key, because the goal is they've got to get back to the stairwell to go back to Quest 9 with the crystal key to go to the center room to fight the final battle against the Frozen Horror. And they know that's not going to be an easy fight. The other thing that I kept hearing about for a long time when Darkhawk was here, he's got a thing, he, he can't be here, but um, is like, what happened to all our gear? Well, it got stolen by the Ice Gremlins, remember? The Ice Gremlins stole all kinds of like cool stuff. And they've been scouring the dungeon looking for that, that treasure room. So that's the other thing they're looking for. Well, right now, we've got the elf over here in the corridor. And we've got the rogue and the guardian knight. And they just discovered this room with this pit. And this is not slippery ice. Remember that one where, the, you know, you'd slip on the ice and fall in. And if you roll black shield twice, you die. Like, you fall in. Well, this is just a regular pit. You jump it, 50% chance of failure. And if you fall in, you're just dead. Like, it's, it's that deep. And you've got two enemy crossbowmen on the other side. So I'm thinking, what do you need to cross a pit? Well... Like a whip <laughs> or a potion of air walk, you know, or maybe pass through rock to try to get to the other side, to the doorway. So they could use some potions. Yeah, so if you're if you're wanting to look for things to spend your gold on and you're not controlling a hero, you might as well give it a shot. So I'm up for that. And as Zargon, I mean, I always like having monsters too, so... Help out your old pal, Uncle Zargon. So, let's see. Count Cogpox says, how do you obtain an ingredient card? Are they worked into the fine treasure action? Or are any ingredients hidden in specific rooms or objects? Just curious how easily it worked into the core game. Well, it the answer is all the above. So, the treasure deck in Rise of the Dread Moon actually has... I think it's like... I forgot how many. Six or eight? New, yeah, it's eight. Eight new cards... Two of them are poisons, so they're like bad cards. But the other six are ingredients. They don't call them ingredients. They call them reagents. The idea is you search for treasure, you just randomly find one. So it's like, oh, this root, you know, restores one mind point. Or you can craft it into these two or three things. And what does that mean, crafting? It means you have to spend 400 gold coins and buy a reagent kit that can be used five times. And wherever the alchemist bench is in the quest, you go there and you don't search for treasure. You just use a specific action of crafting, which can be done when there's monsters like attacking you. And you just automatically get whatever it is, unless it's already been gotten, I guess. So there's only one heroic brew in there. So once that's crafted, I mean, you can't craft it again until someone's used it up. And then the next quest like refreshes it. Now, there is an alchemist bench in every hideout which is a hideout in almost every quest of the 10. So that's like a safe place to craft stuff. Now the wizard doesn't have to buy the reagent kit. He can just craft stuff. So it's like, well, why wouldn't you just always give it to him? Well, he might be busy. He might be dead. <laughs> he might not want to, you know, whatever. So yeah, you could just, you could, you could just, um, just keep searching for treasure until you have a pile of them and just keep them as long as you want, I guess. Go up to a, um, alchemist bench and just like cash them all in and just get them all because there's 20 alchemy cards 
And I think one of them is a bad card. But the rest, it's like, who cares? Uh, they'll at least give you something. There's two alchemy cards that are just, like, random. So they'll say, like, basically just draw another card. The Unforeseeable Fate. The idea behind that is, like, if your character's about to die and you've got a healing potion, we'll use that. But what if you don't have any healing, but you have the Unforeseen Fate? You draw another alchemy card, hoping that it's going to be a healing potion. Now, it might be another unforeseen fate and so you draw another one and then it's nothing and then you're dead but or it could be healing depending on how long you go i do have to say the setup for live questioning looks a lot better i like how it's set up good job oh yeah thank you thank you strange bus yeah i took a lot of feedback i bought some better cameras uh let me turn that countdown timer down but yeah it works a lot better and plus i've kind of gotten used to the idiosyncrasies of these particular cameras so i kind of know like how much time i need to start the stream and like because there's one camera i always have to unplug it and re reset it like it's never just ready to go and i think there's another one it always loses focus so i always have to like hit the focus button on it there's just little little quirks like that but i've kind of gotten to used to those and so it's been a lot better. And the body point thing, that was Darkhawk's suggestion. I think that's a lot better. Because then you can see, like, oh, crap, the elf has only got one body point. I better buy a potion for that, that character. I don't want him to die. Right? And I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, but thank you. Always working on that. And actually, uh, Strange Bus, I used one of the fonts that you're fond of using in my Hero Quest uh, Rise of the Dread Moon unboxing video, which is not a it's not a stream. It's just I just uploaded it. I just took it with my camera, so I mean it doesn't look the greatest. But I spoiled the heck out of the quest book. So if you want, just watch the first 15 minutes and then shut it off. But yeah, I used your font on the screen. It's like spoiler. I didn't make it flash or anything crazy like that. But I'm just looking at the characters here that we've got. So the Barbarian has 8 out of 10 body points. He's got two healing 1d6s. So he's doing okay there. And he's also got hidden reserves. So that's two body points if, if he had to use it in an emergency. Now the Elf is down to 1. The elf has two potions of warmth, but you got to think about it. If you're just taking normal damage, that's just one body point each time. But he does have four potions of plus four. Doing pretty well there. Rogue. So the rogue is down to three out of five body points. Um, yeah, that's a mistake. So the elf... Oh, I switched the elf and the wizard, didn't I? Yeah, the elf should have actually three. And the wizard has one. Switch that around. So we got to see what the wizard has. The alchemist wizard. Okay, so the rogue, what does he have for healing? He's got plus two healing. He's got a potion of restoration that's one body point restored if he uses it. He's got a potion of airwalk that could help him over that uh, uh, crevasse. And let's see. He's got the rallying horn, which would give a boost of movement to those around him. An extra die of movement. So the wizard is down to one body point. And the spells he has left, he has fire of wrath. He has swift wind. Okay, he does have a potion of rejuvenation, but that's just a 1d6 heal. So he's kind of in bad shape, actually. So if somebody wants to help the poor uh, poor wizard. I don't see any alchemist benches for him to craft anything. Do you? So next weekend is probably the last Frozen Horror, yes? Well, thank you, Strange Buzz. We're moving pretty slow today. So I'm thinking... It's quite possible next weekend we could finish, especially if we do extra streams. If we just do Saturday, it might be like two weekends left. So if you, hey, thanks, Count Cogpox. Got a potion. 
So yes, it, it's kind of up to you guys. If you want it, us to like finish up, boom, you know, move on. If you're anxious for us to start something new, we could get it done by next Saturday. But I'm thinking it's probably going to take two Saturdays. Well, plus, let me look at the calendar. So this is the 15th today. So two Saturdays, boom, boom, if we knock it out. Yeah, it'd still be before Gen Con. Because I'll be gone the first week of August at Gen Con. There's no way I'm going to be able to stream from my hotel room, I don't think. The wizard must live. Okay. Well, let's get a potion for, for him and see uh, see what we can do. Thank you for that. Thank you for cashing that in. Because, yeah, it doesn't take real money, just like I said in the video. I finally made a, a video short. And, of course, I, I goofed up with the settings. So the next two videos I recorded after that were, like, really low res. Sorry about that. Okay. You talking to yourself? <laughs> talking to all of you. <laughs> hey. No one. No one else is in the voice channel. Oh, is it just silent on the Twitch? Oh, I don't know. I, I hadn't actually pulled up Twitch. I, oh. I see now that you're, you've are you got the thing set Marigal, up. But... Welcome to the stream. Well, the thing is, I always do it this way because I figure it's easy for us to talk to each other in the voice channel and it's broadcast to Twitch. So our conversation is broadcast so everybody can hear it. No, I know. I just meant like, there wasn't anyone else here, so I didn't know who you were talking to. <laughs> well, I'm talking to the people in the Twitch chat. And I'm talking to the people in the future who will be watching this on YouTube. <laughs> just giving me a hard time, man. I'm just playing. Yeah. It's like I, I amuse you Getting and make you laugh. Like Set up funny. for... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, we were just oh, kind of good, talking. Little good fellas. Yeah, good fellas. Get your shine box. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Carnegie, are you going to join us as a hero today or are you just kind of dropping in? I I think I'm just dropping in. Ah. Sorry. Sure, I, I would, just yeah, in. I would I would love to, but uh, Well, I, I think, mean, people can people can use their gold coins. That's always part yeah. of Yeah. No, no. It's just uh I had to uh okay. we had to run my uh, kiddo to the emergency room this morning, so Oh. Shit. Today kind of went to hell. She's all right. Oh, at, at least it seems to be. But we had a nice little scare. Oh, that's never fun for a pa parent. Yeah, well, it, yeah, it's tough when your kid is young enough that they like can't actually tell you what's wrong yet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad it's. Uh, God, it's okay. Glad she's okay. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, just... Understandable. You know, sent the day's plans all to hell, of course. Sure, sure. Well, I'm glad you stopped by anyway. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's Hero Quest Day. Got to, right? Yeah. We've never had a Hero Quest Day. But yeah. here it is. I, I, I sort of wonder, like, I'm, like, outside of the people who already were clued into the Hero Quest community stuff at Avalon Hill, I wonder how big the reach is going to have been. Like, Well... I Is mean, it going to get to a lot of people who wouldn't otherwise have been paying I attention? Wanted, I hope I so. Wanna, I want to play a live action game in a stadium with like people dressed up in the costumes and like <laughs> giant lawn dice being rolled. Oh, no. Yeah, right. Over. Right. We need. I yeah. Want, so, right. The people want, all dress up and, and you've got like squares. Videos. I want you have, like, five videos with a. With, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like, I was going to say, like, you're talking like five foot diameter squares that the people have to move between and stuff. Yeah, it doesn't have to be D and D, but yeah. In other well, words, I mean, like you know, a, whatever. A giant big enough that a person game. can stand in the middle of it. A and... giant version of the game. I mean, they could paint yeah. the the colors on the field with the like a football field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would like have an aerial view, and, and teams of people would have to run out to like set up the stuff, and you have giant foam like furniture that you could move around. It'd be so great. You'd have to have like water cooling for the costumes, probably, because it would be long. <laughs> mm -hmm. People could watch it. Yeah, it'd be just amazing. Yeah, because they do those like chess games where you know people stand around, but this would be like even more elaborate. The other thing is, I just have these dreams about like viral marketing in Japan of them making uh, like little low budget. Hey, strange bus. People running around. <laughs> yeah. Like a picture, so this was the this was the pitch for the first commercial. So it's like the return of HeroQuest. So like there's this this old elder gentleman, 
and he's like, you know, in his bed with his, you know, slippers and his whatever, his nightcap, you know, all his medicines next to, and he's just like muttering to himself and he's like, you know, hero quest, hero quest. And they're like, what, what, what's wrong with grandpa? You know, all the family is trying to like get on the phone and like <laughs> asking the doctor and like checking everything. And he's just like, you know, springs out of bed and he's just like in his underwear and he's like running through the streets. <laughs> like he's the barbarian, you know, like he grabs something it becomes like a makeshift sword. And then like, as he's doing this, like you see like in the streets, like all these other people like doing the same thing. Like people are grabbing like trash can lids and it's like a shield and <laughs> there's like homeless people <laughs> jumping up like kids. There's like dogs, like, you know, people just businessmen, you know, they like rip off their shirt and they've got like an elf costume underneath and just weird stuff. And, you know, everybody's just running. So this huge mob is forming. And then, you know, it's in it's in the in the town square and you've got like the police line and the SWAT team is ready to go. And the mayor has got his bullhorn. It's like, you know, stop, you know, halt, you know, and then the two sides, they finally, you know, the two battle lines, like something out of Braveheart, you know, like. Mm -hmm. And then you see someone standing next to the mayor and he's just got this big like cape on and then he turns around and it's it's Sargon. It's like, ah, <laughs> you know, and it zooms in on his eyes and then it's the barbarian's eyes and then it smash cut to black it's like hero quest <laughs> that would be the greatest anyway it's it's amazing in my dreams so and there could be other yeah. ones where uh well there was a guy he uh one of the guys on yield in he was going to the airport this was during the translation project when we were trying to figure out like a better translation of the Japanese version of Hero Quest, and mm, guys, mm -hmm. like, well, I'm I'm in Japan right now. I could just ask people, <laughs> and so we were picturing him. You know, he's in the he's in the airport. You know, it's this foreigner walking around. You know, and people are going back and forth, and he's like just like grabbing people randomly and like demanding to know <laughs> how do you pronounce this word. <laughs> that would be oh yeah, that would is be it, hilarious. Is it grim dead or glim dead? And the guy's like, I, I don't know. <laughs> sweat you know and then it's like mm -hmm. it's like oh oh okay it's 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 glim dead all right and he walks away and then the guy just like passes out you know <laughs> he crashes to the ground you know just a comical like Pratt fall faint but then as mm -hmm. he falls you know you see in the background you see the barbarian <laughs> he just like smiles <laughs> and it's of course the old guy wearing the you know furry diaper with the makeshift sword and then the smash gun and hero quest anyway and they could do a series of those and then of course they'd bring it out and it'd be really great i mean for D D, they had this elaborate like commercial with like high production values of these uh these young people like going out in a field and like they're fighting dragons and throwing fireballs and stuff so why not <laughs> something goofy okay. something very 90s you know right okay so we got a few more people. Gonsgrim is here. Jacer's here. Mr. M Master is here. Sasquatch Man, 1984. How y'all doing? Welcome to we your doing any, uh, You doing any... You doing any... Is Dreadmoon talk on the on the table, or is that off limits? Yeah, that's 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 old hat now. We're, that's passe. We don't, we don't talk about that anymore. I'm too angry. No, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. No, no. I was saying earlier, like I did my unboxing and I felt stupid. Yeah, because I haven't every, watched it yet. But... Everybody else has done their unboxing already. So Frank, if you've seen Frank's, he, I don't speak a word of Italian. Well, maybe I speak one word, but I was, I was, I got so much out of his video. He had like beautiful presentations of the miniatures. He had like rotating tables. He had like little smoke effects coming out. It was just amazing. So you know, the power of presentation. I just felt like I can't top this guy. There's no way. So I was promoting his video, but I ran to GameStop when they opened up and I got my copy and it was so easy. I'm like, is it really this easy? It's like, okay, I'm going to drive slowly home, you know, and I, I get it out. And I noticed a couple, a couple things. Like he mentioned a couple of things. So I'm happy to answer questions. And I would say, if you don't want to be spoiled, only watch the first 15 minutes and then just stop. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I'm going to, I don't necessarily I have a photographic memory, <laughs> want to discuss like specific quest details or story spoilers. It's more 
more in a general sense, it was like it seemed like your sentiment was that it's hard, but you know, not as like overtuned yeah. as Made in the Mirror, Frozen Horror. Oh, for sure, absolutely. I mean, one, yeah. one shortcut, and this is not an absolute because, as I use the term gimmicks, and I had to explain what I meant by gimmicks because some people yeah, take that, that as <laughs> like, no, 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 I'm not saying it, they're cheating us. I'm saying a gimmick like like a wrestler, like what's his gimmick? Well, he rips his shirt and he does this thing, and the crowd goes wild, and that's what makes him unique, you know. Mm -hmm. So, the gimmicks for each quest are so different that, like I was saying with the with the alchemy stuff, like most of the time you just find it in treasure. But there are instances where, like, oh, you know, you talk to the old man, and if you do that, he gives it to you, or he tells you where it is, you know, or oh, you find it next to the you know monster or whatever. Like, there's different ways to find it. It isn't always the same thing. Sure. And I like that, but because so they'll have a general rule, but then there'll be specifics, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, as far as the difficulty goes, I mean, I think the f I want to say Nightfall was like in the twenties for monster body points. That's kind of what I do. I count up all the monster body points and just give like a rough estimate of how hard it's going to be and how long it's going to be. Only the twenties? That yeah, seems 20s. that's like yeah. Because uh, is it a solo quest? No, it's because. I don't, 20s, no, I don't, no. 20s is like less than some quests from well, the game system. The trial was 37, which was a blowout for a first quest. But right for 20s, a completely unequipped. Yeah. Yeah, but that but that's what I mean though is that for fully equipped heroes that seems really yeah. low. But it's a little bit of it is deceptive because you got to also remember, okay, if there's ever a time when a specter could get to a cultist or another specter okay right the, those are that, be more the damage can rack, rack up quick even though they're one body point and yes right. if you've got holy water you could smash one of them but no there's yeah the, the other one's left okay he's weaker yeah if it were a solo quest it would be extremely difficult so there's no solo quests in the in the box but i don't think nightfall i mean it doesn't say group quest or solo quest it's just it just is what it is zargon talks as if he's talking to a group so i assume it's a group quest but yeah it's in the 20s for nightfall and which is the prequel quest the first quest i think is also in the 20s and i think after that it's like 40s and you get about yeah my, about my quest recollection seven, I think it goes into the 60s but it never gets above that so like 60 body monster body points yeah is the i mean most. that's not right counting so that's, wandered monsters of course that's not an insubstantial amount yeah, but it also yeah, but it also Danger. means that you know that, that's that's more like where you know Frozen Horror starts rather than finishes. You yeah. know, it's like it's Frozen Horror and Mage of the Mirror by the last like the double quest. Each of those like individually are like over a hundred monster body points. Yeah, yeah. No, but I, I meant more that like because they you know, assume... the first the first group quests for those like they start around that point Which is in weird. like the sixties. It's almost like those later quests like assume that you'd be buying like that you would complete four rooms leave the quest buy more mercenaries come back complete four more rooms i, I always assumed it was more that they that they thought you'd be coming in like so powerful. having blown all your money on a surplus of potions and, and 20 healing potions and come in with like you know three mercs a piece and like yeah, blah they, blah blah they underestimated because <laughs> different people play different ways i mean we, what we've played I mean, people are not throwing the mercenaries away, but they're still getting... They're still definitely. getting killed, because they don't have many body points. No. And yeah, if the, if Zargon decides if to kind of make it a priority to go after the mercs, yeah. they're well, going to drop quick. Well, and if you've got two potions, one to save the hero, one to save the merc, which one are you going to do? You're going to save the hero. So... True, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, Jacer, don't worry. Uh, I'm not going to spoil anything on this. But yeah, rules mm -hmm. and mechanics... I can talk all day about those, no problem. Yeah, I guess, and again, I don't necessarily want to get into specifics, but more in a general vibe sense. One we thing I will, I've been wondering for the, for the wizard. So thank you. Yeah. For that. One thing I've been wondering with regard to that difficulty thing is, I'm like, how hard? Like, I can't. I mean, I, you know, the it's not like the story for these things is typically like absurdly complicated. No. Not. So one thing I'm, I'm pondering is right. like since since I haven't even started with my group yet, you know, it's not like we've done Mage of the Mirror and you don't need it. Oops. You don't need it at all. But I, I'm like, I could just retrofit it to put Rise of the Dread Moon first. I could make Dread Moon flow into Mage of the Mirror rather than vice versa. I think you absolutely, you absolutely could. 
the only thing you do differently, just like people who are like, well, how could you possibly play Return of the Witch Lord before Keller's Keep? Because the Emperor is trapped. You know, how can he be celebrating? Yeah, you just say some time went by and then the other thing happened, rather than saying it's both happening at the same time. So yes, you could have the Kingdom of Elethorn getting invaded, traitors in the midst, the Civil War is going on, you know, and you just leave out the part about, oh, thank you for saving the princess, and, you know, you just kind of leave that part out. Oh, I yeah. met the other princess. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, I guess, yeah, I mean, and I guess, right, I, I haven't seen the quest book yet, but, of course, but it's sort of, you know, You're muted? every every quest, every officially published, yes, we can hear you. Oh, I if you were I talking, can... we couldn't hear you until just now, though. Strange bus, say something. I see your... Oh, I can't hear him. Weird. All right, let me just check here. User volume. Oh, my God, I was, like, talking earlier. Oh, man, your volume oh, like... is zero. I, don't... <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> That's weird. weird. Okay, well, all right. Now you're at 100%. Okay, so say what you were saying there, Strange bus. Welcome to the stream. I, know you've been I was here. gonna pop in and say hi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I heard you like say hello when I first greeted you and I saw you in the channel, but then I didn't. I don't think I heard yeah. you say anything out, out, since then. Well, it's probably because like when he was talking, I went to go like hop in after he was done, and then like he just kept going because he couldn't hear me. It was like <laughs> I've done that to somebody where I muted them for an intro and I forgot to unmute them. I did that when oh, I was like co-streaming with somebody, and I just kept going, and they're like, "Hello, can anybody hear me?" And like, I was like, "Oh, like, so that's what it is." I'm I was just assuming that's what it was, so I was like, just trying to get attention, like, "Hey, <laughs> hello, <laughs> I'm right here." <laughs> yeah. Oops. Okay. Well, I've got you. Got you back there. Let me check everybody else's volume. Okay, so I've got Carnegie's at 87. I've got a mine at 250. I'm kidding. Jacer, I've got him at 96. Yeah. It was probably, I probably was tweaking it and put it too far. We do that all the time, though. Here. Like, I have I you got... muted, and then, like, oh man, just, I was, I was, watching, have it unmuted. I was watching the rant cast, <laughs> and every time I tried to yell at rant cast, I'm like, <laughs> 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 I'm trying to say, it. <laughs> That yeah, it's that, uh, it's that noise gate, yeah. Yeah, so far. Yeah, I just popped in to say hello to everybody, I and I, um, I probably won't be staying quick. too long, so. Aww. Like, um, but I did want to hop in and uh, congratulate you on grabbing the uh, the new expansion. Yeah. Um, I think you might like my it. My store you probably didn't have it, so. Oh, dang. Did they I was too late. late. Oh, shoot. Did you did you go early, or what, what, was, what happened? Tell me the story. Yeah, well, I called. Um, uh, because I was watching the kids most of the day. My uh, wife had an emergency with her grandfather. Uh, also speaking Dang, of which, um, I hope everything goes well with your kid at the emergency room. So I hope everything went well there. But that was, I was going to pop in and say that earlier. But, well, um, I never know what's going on with people. So yeah, no. Wow. Okay. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, we had a, we had a, an emergency. My wife had to go and, uh, grab her grandfather who's, he's, He's pretty up there, so he, uh, he needed to go visit the ER, and um, it turned out it was nothing major. He just had sinus issues, but he was just looking really bad. So, uh, good precaution. But yeah, yeah. So I just called and said, "Hey, did you guys get a copy of that in?" They said that they already sold it about like 30, 35 minutes ago. Okay. So, yeah. well, <laughs> from a What's popularity the... standpoint, that's probably a good sign. Okay. Although I guess I'm. Why'd they only have one copy? <laughs> yeah, all the GameStops had one copy, except for the big one in my area. Mm. There's, They were like, all the stores were like, oh, we only have one copy, but you should check, you know, this store. And I called mm -hmm. them and they're like, I don't think we have that. Like, can you check? Yeah, we don't have that. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. So I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to get there right when they open. And the guy, I saw it behind the counter, he had the stack of all the stuff that they had just brought in. He's like, I haven't even had time to put this stuff away yet. I'm just like, that one right there, that's the one I want. I mean, I wasn't sounding that desperate, hopefully. He's like, oh, you mm. mean the big box of Hero Quest or this one? Like, it's like, that one right there. It's pointing at it like, that one, that one right there, grab that one, grab. I, I, had, a, I had a strategy. <laughs> I, it probably wouldn't have worked, but I have these custom cards that I printed. I was going to like try to like bribe the person, like, hey, hey, 
I'll give you these. <laughs> <laughs> he probably would have hey, said, I'm, uh, I don't know, I bought it, and I'll take those if you're giving them away. You probably don't know about me, but yeah, I run this channel, this a, huge kind of channel. Deal. It's kind of a big deal. Uh, you, you could just what it is move I that. <laughs> yeah, you could probably just move that over the counter. I'll just grab it, and I'll leave some yeah. cash on the counter, if you don't mind. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> you want some extra gold coins on uh, Discord or uh, <laughs> on uh, Twitch? <laughs> Yeah, if if you give if you just give that to me, if you just give that to me, I'll just post you on Instagram. I'll give you some free clout. Yeah. You know, yeah, we'll just, we'll just give you we'll, some free we'll clout. Name a, name a quest after you. Yeah, we'll name a, <laughs> name a quest after you, you. If you don't do it, <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh man, you just got. Uh, it's like his his name is Bill. Oh, you just got billed. <laughs> have one Bill. You know, it's like I'll just do something to insult him on every stream. <laughs> Yeah, it's like wow. It's... Avalon Bill. Avalon Bill. Yeah, yeah Avalon Bill's pretty Bill. cool. I, I, it was funny because yeah, I, um, the one guy on the stream, the uh, nights around the table, which was a really fun stream. I caught it for maybe like fifteen minutes. Um, he, uh, I mean, obviously these people are popular streamers, so like they know how to keep an audience. But anyway, yeah. Um, he kept saying, well, you know, I don't really remember the rules very well. And, you know, I played it when I was a kid. And how should I do this? And, like, people in the chat were like, no, you can't do that. You can't use chaos spells at this point. You can't. Oh, the wizard can't attack diagonally. He doesn't have a staff yet. And I just kept saying, when you're Zargon, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> do whatever you want. And uh, I forget now. Somebody oh, yeah. teasing me like, oh, now you're Avalon Bill. Like, no. Yes, that's the rule, but you can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> They're both true, but yes, there's an official rule, I guess. But it's like, come on, don't rules lawyer. But I mean, I guess he was interacting with the the crowd, so that was the point. It's like, oh yes, yeah. te teach me how to play, and he wasn't doing it in a really sarcastic way. It's like, oh, you want it? You want to sit down? You think you're the you're the big guy now? I'm like, well, why don't you just see see how how good a job you do? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, easy. I think there's. I mean, I think there's like doing what you want because you have a plan for it like you have some idea of what effect yeah. it's going to have on your game you have some you know some concept of i'm making this change because i think for my particular players this is going to make our play sessions more fun yeah well, and then there's like doing the wrong you know the sort of quote unquote wrong thing because you are, you just haven't bothered to learn the rules or whatever and i don't know if it's a case of not bothered but oh, you know dang. We got right, like, we got more people in here. I I need to be paying attention. But yeah, he was doing it more in a case of like, oh, I, well, I don't really remember the role. What what is it that I get to do? You know, or he right. could have been just playing them like, <laughs> oh yes, tell me more. <laughs> oh, question. Uh, and Angus, is, after you. Angus is here. Jacer is here, and Carnival and Strange Bus. So we've got a packed house. Go ahead. What do you guys? Go, what were you saying? I said um, they did name a goblin after you. It didn't what? Yeah, he did. They named a goblin after you. They named a goblin after me, and they named a goblin and after me. Jaser. Yep. Yeah, it was the goblins yeah. named Jaser oh. and Kurgan. Yep. Well, <laughs> XSC three. He's like, ooh, he's more of a robot. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they had little, uh, a little paper discs that they put underneath the miniatures, and then they wrote actually wrote the name on there. So it's like, okay, mm. that gets people involved. That's kind of a cute. That's pretty gimmick. cool. <laughs> in a positive way it had little like sticky tack under there so it stuck right to the cardboard sticky and they move it around and it would stay with the mini sticky mm. tack is amazing Leapers. Mm -hmm. or blue tack. But it was one of those I only saw it a couple of times when they were flipping the mini over to put them on oh that's something sticky I was going to say when I was talking to Count po Cogpox I was thinking about some of the things with the build quality of the game like the fact that the the furniture was hollow because it's cardboard and plastic in the original version. That was kind of like part of the fun because in the quest where you carry the treasure chests out, Prince Magnus's gold, everyone you could pop could, it over the head of the <laughs> Yes, or the sword that's pointing up, it's like you see, oh, he's carrying the treasure chest, see? But you can't do that with the modern ones because it's solid plastic. But you could yeah. do it with some sticky tack maybe. Or like the treasure chest, like it was kind of flat on the top, so the dwarf could kind of balance on top of it. It's like, oh, he's disarming it by standing on it. You know, because he's supposed to be on the square, but you can't really put him on the square. Mm -hmm. Angus McBain right. says, I have a couple errands to run, but I can join in around. Well, I'm glad I'm not having another emergency. Sorry to hear. But, yeah, thanks for stopping by. 
and listen in while driving. Well, drive safe. And uh, yeah. Speaking of which, Kurgan, real quick, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to check out because I have to prep for my because I'm gonna be making up a lot of my stream time uh, from this week because I gotta travel to Oklahoma next week. So oh okay. Well, um, don't overdo it. <laughs> Oh, this is the one, it's the one time every once in a while that I stream uh, late, late, late. But, um, if you didn't catch my message, uh, I did talk and plan out oh. this time, so, um, I'm not, like, ducking out on you the next two weeks, so the next two weeks I'll probably be joining you officially from, Sweet. like, 7 to 10, uh, maybe earlier, so I'll actually be in the game. Yeah. But I will be joining you for, um, a couple rounds if you're right. doing the Frozen Horror and yeah. the next, the last game, too, so. Oh, yeah. I'll be there. I don't always pull up the private messages because I'm, I'm like putting that on the stream too because we use the chat. Oh. But anyway, yeah, no, that's great because I, I wanted you to be around for for that because you were here when it started. Um, I'll be there. I don't know if PSK can make it, but he did stop in and said some kind words, and that was pretty sweet um, last week. So last week? Yeah. So, yeah, the invitation is always open to people but and uh i'd love to be able to yeah, and finish it with a bang so yeah. yeah and if i can if you're doing uh rise of the dread moon after this i will probably be making it for that too so sweet yeah and we'll just skip major the mirror entirely or yeah I just will... <laughs> well the thing is major the mirror is like this so basically assume it's going to take seven months to complete good or bad oh. that's what it is Unless we drastically change it. Like, I wanted... When I first started playing Frozen Horror, I wanted to prove to the world how messed up this this pack was. By saying, look, you throw everything you got at it and it still breaks, you know? And eventually we kind of... It's like, no, we're in this from the long haul. We're going to make the best of it and have a pretty good time. But, I mean, Mage mm -hmm. of the Mirror is, is long as well. So, if we... Okay. if we d I would like to do Rise of the Dread Moon, but we could probably do that one fairly quickly. And then get to something else. Or we could like split it up, like have two days. Like I'm not going to be doing this play test forever. Like eventually we'll be done with that. We're pretty close to finishing actually, personally, I think. And that's been a lot of fun, but you guys don't get to see it because it's private. Once that's done, my Thursdays have a little more time. I mean, we still do the rant cast, but we could do like, yeah, maybe one quest pack on one day and one on the other. And because I realize not everybody can make every stream. So maybe if you can make it on oh. a Thursday, or on a Tuesday, or on a Saturday, or on a Friday. But I don't <laughs> want to stream all those days because I've tried to do that before, and unlike Strange Bus, I can't <laughs> do marathon streams like over and over. Like it's just too much. Hey, I've slowed down a little bit. No, don't give me too much credit, man. Yeah, we'll I don't do uh, younger man. I don't do seventy-two hour like marathons anymore. It's not. Yeah. It's not great. Like I don't stream three days at a time. Uh, for, for but, health reasons, it's definitely you got to moderate it. If, if you do more of the um, take the elf out and have the elf do the uh, start Mage of the Mirror and have the other heroes start Rise of the Dread Moon simultaneously. Well, here's what I here's what I want to do. I'll just be honest with you. So I have played my brother and I have played because we go way back playing Hero Quest. We started playing it together. We did the Barbarian quest packs, and he was kind of like the test subject, because he prefers to be Zargon, but it's like, these quests are really hard. <laughs> you know, so I kept making changes to try to, like, make it more fair and more fair. But it wasn't until we did the stream here, and we got uh, PSK and Blue Star to join in. So we basically took the, the Barbarian quest, solo quests, instead of having the Barbarian getting killed over and over again. We just threw two Guardian Knights in there, so now suddenly you have three heroes playing a solo quest, and that was actually manageable. So I have played the elf solo quests with two elves or an elf and some other hero, and it actually works pretty well. But by themselves, yeah. it's, it's bloody. Maybe do that. The elf and the rogue or the elf a rogue and a, an animal or something and have four heroes that did this one go right into the next one. Because I remember. I, and then you the first can add more because you, uh, you still have the druid and the warlock and... Uh, the bard as well that can jump pirate. in, uh -huh. and the, the dwarf, the pirate. Yes, the Grog pirate. <laughs> Grognak, the legend. Yeah, yeah. Oh I, yes. Oh, the return. That, man, I got to check because so I printed out some cards that I'm gonna take with me to Gen Con. I actually had two batches because first I did one and I thought I've got enough time to do another one, 
I have some custom cards that are coming of the pirate. So I've got the pirate orc skill cards and yeah, it's funny. I, of course, now when I look at them, I always think of like, you know, it's after it's printed that you're like, yeah, I really should have added this detail to it. It's too late now. But yeah, those when those come, that'll be perfect. So I'm not saying it has to be the pirate, but I'm kind of hoping for it. Yeah. Can, yeah. You yeah, know, which, what, you, you're, what you're talking about earlier, mm -hmm. um, uh, these quests were really hard because I remember you trying to start off with, it was like me and somebody else. Yeah, I remember I got creamed like what well, like the second quest in. Yeah, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pulse. It was a yeti every time. Yeah, it was the yeti. Well, because I'd implemented the the draft note escape pattern, and that's why we got we got the wrestling moves eventually out of that, which was a lot of fun. But yeah, it was very difficult because if you didn't have someone to get that yeti off of you, it was really tough. I mean, yeah, yeah. even with the draft notes, I feel like. They, they there's pretty money. there's still pretty good odds right that if yeah. without help that yeti is just gonna hug you to death if i had to give my review death hug of i mean mage of the mirror i've only played two quests out of it so i can't say for sure but probably along similar lines if i were my recommendation to new people who are starting the frozen horror for the first time go through the quests take out maybe a third of the monsters maybe even half of the monsters that's one step to make it like more manageable. And the other is to add more potions. So when it says you find one potion of healing, make it two, make it three, you know, something like that. Increasing the gold is just not good enough because yes, you can buy stuff, but you've got to survive the entire quest to get to that point. So me personally, I think taking yeah, out the monsters and increasing the healing is the way to go. And it could still be very challenging. I mean, I've tried to plow through it. I mean, my approach has been don't take stuff out, just add stuff on. But, you know, here or there, you guys haven't seen it, but I mean, here or there, it's like, okay, I just ignored that one little spear trap in that corner. It's like, okay, well, that doesn't really affect anything. And yes, on this stream with the interactivity, I mean, maybe it's boring for a while. Someone's like, yeah, let's throw in some monsters. That makes it fun. But we also get mercenaries, but I don't think it's ever gotten to the point where it feels like we're cheating. But honestly, mm. this is so if this is like, you're playing on nightmare difficulty, like, okay, well maybe a cheat here and there wouldn't be so bad, <laughs> but I also don't want to feel hey. like it's a foregone conclusion. You know? Now you okay. could just add a, a random draw from the alchemy deck to go with that potion of healing. So they might get another one or they might get an ingredient or something. Sure. Even though the barbarian can uh, make nothing, well, he could still eat it for the one, or I save mean, up and buy a reagent kit. This is three quarters of the way towards being an alchemy deck already, so yeah, yeah, we're close to it. Yeah, I was thinking I need to, I want to go through it, make sure I understand it all, you know how it's balanced and everything, and then come up with my own because I have all kinds of ideas, but I don't want to just. Like I was going to do all this stuff for Space Crusade, but I'm like I don't really understand the game as well as I need to before doing that because I, I may just break it you know <laughs> by doing that so hey yeah. Kerrigan I gotta I gotta dip out here uh thanks for having me on guys um I gotta go prep for my stuff so yeah I hope everybody have a good day throw any gold at us I, I might like I said I'm gonna pop in probably every oh, once cool. in a while and do nice. some uh go when are you actually planning on starting the game you well, know uh, any any second now. I'm just waiting for. Oh okay. Yeah, I'll <laughs> have a go go ahead. If you wanna, I mean, there's enough yeah. people here. We could uh, pass out heroes. Now you're not. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks. And his name is John C. I'll probably be in the stream. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What? Whenever you can. So I know Angus has to go. Thank you for stopping by. Um. Well, you're driving. Okay. Do like they did today and do rescue Sir Ragnar, then lead in quest followed by Rise of Dreadmoon. Yeah. The thing is, you can prepare heroes for anything. So if you're starting a hard pack like this, yes, you can just say, okay, well, everybody should have one piece of armor. Yeah. Everybody should have a healing potion. Go for it. I actually think that that would have been a great way for Avalon Hill to have potentially kind of patched the difficulty a little bit, would have been to sort of be like... Scalable difficulty. So just kind of have like a cheat sheet of if you're starting, if you're just starting this quest pack, you know, have like a little thing for each quest pack where you say, hey, based on its difficulty, quest. if you're if you're starting with this with heroes who haven't 
aren't carrying over anything from previous adventures, give each hero, you know, you know, maybe you have it per hero, or maybe you just have a generic, like, start them each with this much gold, and then let them buy stuff before the first quest starts, because some, otherwise this yeah. might be too difficult. Some people have done that. Yeah, some, I always thought about 100, it's a, about 150 gold works pretty well, because they can either buy a shield or a helmet and a dagger, so they got a little bit of a range attack. The wizard can get a staff and a couple daggers, but it gives them a little bit of a fighting chance. Well, maybe that. Well, I mean, that's not enough for something like Frozen Horror. Gives but... them more <laughs> agency, but yeah, it's like because I, the way I used to do it is I would just take the equipment deck, which I printed out, and just say like, okay, everybody gets two pieces, and they can trade them or whatever. Because if you give them the gold, you're still got to give them direction to say, well, okay, you should buy armor. Armor is very important in this game. You may think the best, you know, defense is a good offense and get a really good weapon, but the monsters you're going to be facing have a lot of body points so you yep. want both but armor is going to keep you alive so you can do more attacks so it's like yeah. okay, do that i mean i think a mix so is a mix strategy. can be good right you need somebody that you can rely on to bring something big down right because one of the problems is even even with the you know the only a one in six shot of rolling a black shield if you're only you know hitting one or two against something, you know, some monster that's got five, you know, a gargoyle, right, with five defend dice. It's like, well, that thing's going to defend all your hits a lot of the time. Or a giant wolf with six body points. Yeah, body it, points. it's just right. With only two attack dice, that thing's going to take a while to go down. Yep. So it's, you know, not necessarily everybody go all offense or all defense. I think, you know, kind of, it's like, okay, get some people who can try to tank a little bit, get somebody who you can go to, and especially if need be that, you know, you can throw spells or potions at to sort of say, we need this guy to take this guy down quick. <laughs> and, and Hero Quest has always been that way in the sense that, I mean, it's not forcing you to play a certain way, but it's also making suggestions. Like in the book, it'll say, if you're, a big, you know, new to playing the game and you're the elf, you should probably choose the elf, the, the earth spells. They don't say why, but it's because it, there's healing there. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, it'd be cool to have fire. Yeah, but you're going to have to rely on someone else to heal you now. So you should probably mm -hmm. pick water or earth, yeah. unless you have some other way of healing yourself. I mean, and I think, I think I've said... about the door blocking technique. Like, why would you do that? Well, because if you have a diagonal weapon, especially if it's the wizard, instead of him hanging back, he can get an extra he can attack poke. in. Yeah. He and can he's poke protected. <laughs> or, they don't say this, but what about the technique of clustering people into a corner? So that if a wandering monster is triggered, it can't attack the person who's actually searching. It's way on the periphery. So there's little techniques mm -hmm. like that that they could suggest. And so I don't think it's wrong. You could just say, well, but I'm Zargon. I'm trying to kill everybody. Well, maybe you're a mentor when you're teaching them that stuff. <laughs> and then when the game starts, you're back to Zargon again. So, I, yeah, I agree with you that I think giving little bits of direction in the book is a nice way to kind of nudge people towards having a better play experience rather than just saying nope you just got to learn it the hard way because they may not take it that way they may just take it as gee this game is broken <laughs> you know which i mean it kind of was i mean they fixed it a little bit could use a little more work so yeah I'd, i would estimate it's probably going to be the, a similar way to in uh mage of the mirror cut out the monsters increase the rewards yeah, and if you're starting from scratch, yeah, either give them give them equipment or give them gold and then some suggestions on what they should spend it on. Because storyline-wise, I don't have a problem. I mean, all this obsession with like playing them in story order, you just say, oh yeah, this is when the heroes were fighting the Witch Lord. There, there you go. Oh, well, they already defeated him, but now they've got to save the Emperor. Well, you remember how the princess was saved? Well, this was when the war was still going. Here was the adventure that happened right before that. That's yeah. all you need, and then you go in. Because once you're in, nobody's worrying, like, wait a minute, how can Sir Ragnar be here if he was over there? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I don't even mind, I mean, like, playing, like, starting a new quest. I mean, we did that with Sir Death. We were playing, and it's like, all of a sudden, we're level one characters again, because we're playing mm -hmm. the game system. Versus we were playing the Frozen Horror a couple of weeks ago, and we had, like, powered up guys. Because we're not carrying it over between... Although I usually do that with these streams, you know, if you guys find some great treasure, well, people next week benefit from that, you know, or if you get killed, well, the next guy has an opportunity to start a new character. Yeah. Okay. So who's, who's going to play as a hero? 
enough uh, preparatory talk. I'm definitely yeah, I guess... interested to continue in the night. All right, so Jacer's going to play the night. Okay. So he's down here. So he's down here. Mulling over this uh, this chasm of doom. <laughs> so the knight, grab his character sheet here. Yeah, poor Jacer has been trying to manage a lot of heroes. It, it is a challenge uh, managing all this. I mean, I used to think just being the wizard was a challenge because you've got all this stuff, but it's like okay, you've got five heroes, it's all this stuff. But the knight is doing pretty well for himself. He's got. A 1d6 healing, he's got a plus 4 healing. Of course, that doesn't do him any good if he falls into the pit. And he does not have the potion of airwalk, but he does have a whip. Now, the whip will it allow him to jump the pit as long as he doesn't roll a black shield. If he rolls a black shield, though, he's fallen in. And if you're wondering who does have a potion of airwalk, uh, let's see. I think I just said one of them earlier. The elf has one. Yep. I see the only one. I guess you had some earlier oh, that used it up. One. And you're still looking for your stolen gear. The rogue, the rogue still has the one that the um, <coughs> knight gave him. Oh yes, you're right. He does. Yep, there it is. I think I need to print out some of those adventure design kit uh, character sheets that are bigger. Actually, my brother-in-law, what he does is he just he'll just put like one character sheet on a on like the scan bed for the photocopier and just print the whole page, so you've got the entire page to write notes if you need to. Because when you constantly erase, it starts to get hard to read. All right, so Jay, sir, you're gonna control every everybody. I'll take the rogue once I get back home. Okay. Cool. All right. So try not to kill him before then. <laughs> right. Right. Wait till I jump in and then uh, one body point left and take him out. <laughs> like, you ruined it. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> Did you see what I had to work with? Can't work under these conditions. All right. All right. Yeah. It should hopefully only be like another half hour. So. Yeah. It's not rush hour where hey. you are. No, backcountry roads. Oh, it's Saturday, um, of I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and mute so that you know I'm not bugging you guys with road noise if anything's coming through. Ah, it sounds pretty good actually. But yeah, you can mute us if you want. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I'll I'll take the rogue if no one else wants them or whatever whatever else is left once I get back on. <laughs> Whatever's left. Yeah, the rogue is right here corner so yeah i was saying earlier that the party is kind of split so you kind of got to decide what you're doing actually i should probably just focus on one i can switch cameras okay, it's a little better all right anybody else yeah well i would love to but i think it's gonna have to be another time Oh, it's okay. Well, it's always yeah. good to have you. Like I said, uh, I mean, you can participate more than one way. Okay. There's the other camera. Yeah. All right. Well, enjoy yourselves. Try not to uh, get killed. <laughs> yep. That's life. Try not to get killed. Okay. Frozen horror. That's that's sort of the... I mean, I feel like that's kind of the story of that quest pack, right? Try not to die. Good luck storming the castle. Yep. Oh, we got an yeah, equipment. Bus. Yeah, so Strange Bus, um, let's see. Okay, so Angus will be coming back later. We've got Jace. Um, who else is in the chat here? Anthaz, Diabolic898, Gonsgrim is here, Sam Skio, Sasquatch1984, and Slower1927. So Polsky came through and uh, banned a bot and he didn't take care of the rest so i'm assuming you guys are all legit which i always appreciate <clears throat> but yeah any of you who want to control a hero you can just go to the quest talk in our discord 
Discord's uh, displayed on the screen, but I can also put it in the Twitch chat. Now I realize some people just want to lurk, and that's fine. But you can participate by using your chat points, your channel points, your gold coins in the Twitch chat to buy potions and things. So we got to draw an equipment card. Thank you, Count Cogbox. It's kind of a parting gift. But that's the nice thing. You can just drop in, do something, and then leave. You don't have to necessarily, like, oh man, I gotta stay for four hours and play. Oh, I can't do that. Can't commit to it. So we got a halberd. So this is three attack dice, diagonal. It's two handed, though. Can't be used by the wizard. So who wants the halberd? Or who should who should have it? Jacer. I think everybody has a, a diagonal attack of three or better. Uh, yeah, the I guess the Fortune's long sword, Elf's got long sword. Yeah, you're right. Barbarian has Molly the Murderous. Wizard has the Alcor uh, staff and you can't use this. Rogue has the long sword. Yeah, so it's kind of something to sell. The later. Rogue can hold it. And, yeah, or give it to the the dwarf or. One of the other, or the uh, uh, one of the other heroes that comes in, pirate or something, yeah. Pirate Give it to one of the other guys. All he needs is his cutlass. <laughs> you wouldn't mind, I'm sure. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody else? Oh, threat card for Zargon. Hey, thank you, Strange Bus. Thank you. All right, the door suddenly slams shut. No escape. Okay, so this this door suddenly slams shut and it can't be reopened till the next round. One up for the baddies. That's right. Are we the baddies? Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So it's I think it's my turn. Yep. But, but that was a free thing that I was given. So I'm going to switch over. So these, these guys are protected. Yeah, they can't open the door, so right. they can't get me. Okay, so then the uh, swordsman, evil swordsman moves forward to attack the barbarian. Well, let's get our virtual dice back, Ribby's dice back on the screen here. Two skulls. All right, so barbarian should defend with five. And if at any time you need uh, clarification on what he's got for inventory, let me know. Three. Wrestling move. Ah, uh, yep. Okay, what's it gonna be? It. Uh. Let's see. I'm gonna do uh. I want him to grab the door frame and then grab the other guy like with a scissor or neck lock or whatever with his legs and like flip him around. I'm right to the ground. I'm not sure if who would use a move like that, but it, Somebody there's got to be a lot of high flyers that do. All right, so we did that. So I threw him to the ground. He lost one body point. I would just picture, you know, he's got the guy in a headlock, and he's just, like, looking out of the crowd, and they're, like, yelling different things. Like, what should I do? What should I do? Figure four. <laughs> Razor's edge. Okay. All right, so you did that. Um, darn. Okay. Well. Yeah, I could still move these guys. Go 
Come on, camera. All right, I can still move this guy here. All right, Barbarian's turn. Now, we're treating it as you got a roll for movement if there's monsters present. Jason and I are also doing the play test, so I kind of got to like reconfigure my brain. Like, no, okay, we're we're not using that rule set. We're using different. We're using this one. Yeah. yeah. Four. Dang. Okay. Well, uh, I can roll five. So let's see what I get. and three hits. Dusty. Got him. Pretty powerful, but not that strong. All right, so you wiped out that uh, evil mercenary. What's next? Switch cameras back. Okay, so you got rid of that monster. Uh, gonna take a step into that room. Big, big flying leap into the room. Yep. Gingerly put his foot on that square, huh? Okay. All right, you've landed on a pit trap. Clunk. You fall into the pit and lose one body point, and that ends your turn. Well, for that character. So, Barbarian drops down to seven. Down to seven. Yep. Yeah, for those just now joining us, welcome to HeroQuest fans. You're listening to the wonderful sounds of Carl Casey at Whitebite Audio. And any of you who are lurking in the Twitch chat, you can use your channel points, your gold coins, to buy stuff for the good guys or the bad guys. For the heroes or for Zargon. It's your choice. Some people do both. Don't ask me to explain it, but sometimes they do. Hey, Count Cogpox. See, I don't have to keep asking you. It's like, come on. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so bonus mercenary for the heroes. All right. Any particular preference is what type of uh, mercenary? Or who, who it should go to? Roll for it. Ah, okay. I've done that before. Six. Six. Oh, I didn't remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what to do. And it'll go to Jacer because he's controlling everybody. Let's just see here. I had like a system that I was using. Okay, six would be a swordsman. Okay, so you guys just got yourselves a swordsman. And I've got Ribby's wonderful 3D printed uh, rings that go around the bases of the characters. Whoops. So you can easily differentiate it. So, um,. Where would, Jacer, where would you like the mercenary to pop up? Because he could pretty much pop up anywhere to help you out. Like, one party uh, versus the other. Do you care? Or... He can uh, he can jump out of that cupboard there and join the barbarian. Okay. That's an idea. <laughs> he jumps out of the cupboard. Ta-da! Don't know how long I was hiding in there. Yep. 
heard the last swordsman fall and he's like, I think it might be safe. <laughs> Barbarian fell in a pit, so he doesn't hear anything. He's like, wait a minute, was that a liquor cabinet? It looks empty. He's like, it was. He, he seems a little unsteady on his feet. It's kind of like <laughs> leaning from side to side. Like, oh, great. Let's slap this guy around. Okay, so thanks for that. So you've got uh, a swordsman. Mighty swordsman. Alright, so after the barbarian, uh, just going in character order here. So the rogue is next. So we'll switch back to the other camera. This is the rogue right here. Search for traps. Uh, I think you've already done that. Uh, the secret doors. You've already done that too. All right. Um, how far north does that corridor go? All the way up to there. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Yeah, it looks like you were trying to unex you were trying to explore all the various areas that you hadn't been to yet. These are it's a big two part quest. Roll for movement. Yep. Yeah, so originally I was going to stop the stream and go check out those other people, but I'm okay just continuing to play until we're too tired. Seven. Seven. Let's move him. Uh... I guess move him seven spaces down and to the right. Okay, so you want to pass. Was this one search was this one search for secret doors? Uh yes. Okay. I think though, if you guys do get to the final conflict, I'll probably put that off at least until next Saturday, because I do want Strange Bus to get a crack at it and I want to be like a little more a little more awake, a little more organized, because today was a crazy day for all the reasons that we've already talked about. Of course, I also thought I'd be waiting like months for Rise of the Dread Moon. Okay, so you want him two away from the door, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. And you said there's no secret doors here? Correct. All right. Uh, so on to the alchemist. All right. Uh, so he's in the room with the slippery ice. Yep. Let me get him to uh, roll for his movement. Five. He's going to attempt to go in there and jump over the pit trap to the other side. Okay, is he jumping over the ice too? No, he's going to do two separate things in case he falls. Okay. But so are you just going to like move along the ice and then try to cuz you got to touch it yeah. like one square and then you got to jump over. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to go two to the right three. and then step on the ice. Okay, roll your one combat die. If it's a white shield, you fall down. Cuz only the barbarian has the snowshoes of speed. All the suspense. Let's okay, go. he's safe. Okay. All right, so let me do that again. Okay, so jump the no, pit. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, so you're jumping the pit, so you got to avoid rolling a skull to successfully jump across. And you got to tell me where you're going to end up. Okay, I'm jumping right over the barbarian. Okay, to this square right here. Yep. Okay. Shield. Okay. 
All right, so you leaped over his head through the doorway, which is awesome. See, what he just did there, I mean, in the draft notes, they're saying just you could do that any time. You don't have to know the pit trap is there, so that's what I allow. Okay, so you jump into the room and appears to be safe. You gotta search for traps. Okay, you search the room for traps. The ceiling looks suspicious. The ceiling looks suspicious. The ceiling looks suspicious. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll get some tiles because it's hard to see on the stream exactly. Oh, wow. remember. All right, so there's like three of them all in front of the door. Pretty close, yeah. Let me see here. Okay, so the first one. Yeah, there's a lot of traps in this quest pack. So right there, the little question mark tiles will be a representation of danger. See, I thought I printed enough of these out. Maybe I didn't. There's another one. Need one more. Here it is. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so there were three traps detected, and of course the barbarian is still in that pit right there. Alright, rogue. Or, I mean, sorry. Elf. Oh, I gotta change the camera, don't I? There's the elf right there. Still got a roll for movement. Jacer, are you there? Did I lose him? Jacer, you're muted. Okay, roll the two. He might have had to just go silent. Okay. So you're going to move down towards the others? South two. Okay. He must have had to go radio silent there. That's fine. We've played uh, over the chat before, too. Okay. Any actions? Well, I guess he's already searched for everything he can. So next, okay, knight. The knight is right here. Roll the six. Right, six, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just one past the boot. You talking to boot. All right, Zargon's turn. Okay, well, I can't really do anything. I mean, well, 
I choose not to do anything with these guys at the moment. Actually, just for fun, I'm going to show you something. Look, watch this. He's jumping the pit. <laughs> and then he's jumping back. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Because <laughs> monsters can jump stuff for free. Uh, Merc moves down two. Oh, forgot about the Merc. Sorry about that. Okay, so the swordsman moves down. Well, by putting him down too, he'd be in the pit. Are you sure you want to do that? Like, that's that's down two right there. Down one, okay. All right. I choose not to do anything then, so back to the barbarian. Alright, um, Barbarian is gonna move and try, he has a toolkit, he's gonna try to disarm the trap that is diagonal from him. Yes, he does have a toolkit. <clears throat> okay. So we place you on the square, and you roll anything but a skull on one die. Ooh, sorry. Skull. It was a stalactite. And the stalactites are particularly nasty because I think they just hit you, and that's it. There's no rolling. It's just an automatic damage. This deadly spear of ice clings to the ceiling of ice caverns. Unless searched for and disarmed, the stalactic falls upon the first hero to move onto the trap square, causing one body point of damage. But the trap is gone now. It's sticking out of your face. But it melted, so it's all good. Yeah, I don't do my helmet. <laughs> yeah. Now I got a blue flag. Maybe if you maybe if you find uh, Boren's legendary helmet, it'll protect you. But you don't you haven't found it, have you? So okay, so he's down right. to six. Someday I'm gonna have just like a little keypad that has everything just a hotkey for all this stuff. Hey, Polsky, thank you. Oh, so Sam Skio was, was uh, a bot. I'm so disappointed. I trusted you. <laughs> I went to your daughter's wedding. <laughs> Kidding. All right, so that, unfortunately, that ended the barbarian's turn, I believe. Yeah, it's a, a, most traps do. Yeah, I think it's yeah. I think the only exception is the uh, the wandering monster trap. You can still do your action if you have it left, and the spear trap. If it misses, you can keep going as if nothing happened. All right, rogue. Down there by the by the boot. Yeah, thanks, Polsky. Nine. Okay. Yeah, Chaser does a good job, but at the same time, if anybody does want to jump in as a hero, we'll, we'll fit you in, no problem. You can have up to five. Uh -huh. Just move him six spaces to the right. Okay. Okay, so by the bones? Yeah. Alright. And... 
Can I research? Uh, can I search that for secret doors? The double corridor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No secret doors detected. All right. All right, wizard. Um, ah, Count P Cogpox. You said bonus treasure search for which character? For him. For the rogue. Okay. So I guess you searched the pile of bones. You want to do it? Yes, definitely. Okay. So you search the pile of bones for treasure. Potion of magic resistance. Small blue bottle negates the effects of any damage causing spell cast on you. Um, Thanks, Count. No, 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 I wonder when that'll ever come in handy. <laughs> yeah, you've got two of the damage ones, and it looks like one of the regular all-encompassing ones. Thanks for that. Well, he got one of those when he got the potion of battle, I think. Magic resist all effects. Nice. And he has a magic resist damage and a fire resist. Yep. Also, I got uh, strength and a potion of healing plus two. And I think he's down to one warmth potion. And an air walk. Um, I'm not at one time, the rogue had, yeah, at yeah. one time, the rogue had three. He doesn't have the warmth warm. potion anymore. Oh, he did use the last one? Alright. Well, the elf has two. And the barbarian doesn't have any. Neither does the alchemist. So yeah, I think they've been they've been used up. Because there was that time when he was just taking hit after hit. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so... Yeah, like I said, at one time he did have three. But yeah, alright. So, so he used all of them up. Count Cockbox says, I'm rolling to die. On a 1 to 5, I'm selecting a positive effect. But if I roll a 6, Black Shield, I'll select a negative effect. So you're meta, meta gaming. That's awesome. <laughs> I like it. Well, see, I do that to myself sometimes too. Because sometimes I really know what I want and someone bought it. And I'm like, yes. Other times I'm like, well, I'm not really sure. So I'll just roll a die to say, okay, it's, you know, 1 through 6, 1 through 5, 1 through 8. Just getting into the spirit of HeroQuest days. See? Yeah, you can do that. Some people just want to hear a loud voice yell, you know, his name is John Cena, and other people take it a little further. <laughs> Whoa! Okay. All right. With that done, uh, Wizard, two spaces north. Two spaces north. Okay. Simple enough. By the cupboard. Yep. Seems the liquor cabinet is is completely empty. Surprising. Overall, I think it helps the party. I mean, it's only a small chance it could be bad. But what fun would all the beneficial effects be? Well, see, that's that's the thing. You never know when an agent of chaos is going to show up and start helping. Your old pal Uncle Zargon out. And some uh, young buckaroo is going to have to step up to the plate to try to counteract the effects. Tip the scales back into balance. <laughs> okay, so is he going to do any action? Um, search for secret doors. Okay. No secret doors. Oh, all right. just kidding. <laughs> I couldn't see it in all the traps. There's too much orange. Okay, there it is. 
the secret door right there into this other room here. Okay. So on to the elf. Another two spaces south. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he only got two. two. All right. Okay, and then the night. Next to the old boot. Yeah, I didn't have time to print out a boot tile for Gen Con. I should have should have planned ahead. I could have had a whole like sheet of them. <laughs> To start handing out. Night got What's that? The night got five. Five. Okay. Um, I guess just uh, move them to the right five and search that double corridor for traps. Oh, I think it's clear. Okay. So do you I want to search or not? Yeah. Might might as well do something. No traps detected. All right. Yeah, why waste an action? Just, I mean, if that's all you can do, just do it, right? Why waste an yep. opportunity um, to do an action? Yeah. Uh, move the swordsman to the left one, please. All right, he maneuvers in the room. All right, my monsters are just going to stay put. Okay, uh, the barbarian's gonna move to the left one and up one, so that he's next to that cupboard. Okay, but he's not completely against the wall. He's just next to the wizard there. Yes. All right. And then um, the rogue. Right here. The road got two. Um, he's going to move to the north, two spaces. Okay. Oh, uh, just something that, just a small thing I didn't say before. They're actually saying on the Hasbro Pulse page, um, we recommend you play this quest, Nightfall, before embarking on the adventure contained with the Rise of the Dreadmoon expansion. I think, though, without spoiling anything, Jacer, is that it's more for story reasons than anything else. I think they still you still probably want to have a fully equipped hero before you embark on the quests, even though they're not as devastating. <laughs> so it's not a like a load-up gear quest, necessarily. Unless you want it to be. But I'm going to remix all of these, because I know they've already been spoiled to the world. Okay, so, so far, hasn't detected anything. He's just making his way up that, uh, up that way. Because there, there is a pit trap in this corner there in the door leading to the slippery ice but that's where everybody is right now there's no other way into that uh the the one room is there the uh let me go back the cupboard oh room? i don't have a camera yeah uh uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, that's the only way in unless I mean, you're using pass-through rock. 
that you know of. All right, let me. Yeah, I gotta exit and I guess jump out and jump back in. I lost the video feed again. Oh, okay. Yeah, do what you need to do. We'll be here. All right, I got it back. I was painstakingly recreating the first quest from Rise of the Dread Moon from a a fragment of a screenshot that I got from Frank's video. It's quite funny. I got almost all of it. Because he was just like, he said something in Italian I didn't understand, but I think, I think what he was saying is like, oh, we could show you more, but nah, we'll keep those spoilers. But it just was just enough that I could freeze frame it. Of course, now I got the whole thing, so... So. All right. So what's the alchemist gonna do? All right. So what's the alchemist gonna do? If you got your video back. Move two spaces to the left, and search for treasure. Ah, the safe search. Safe search. The wall of heroes. I'm hearing a little echo of myself, but I guess. Uh, uh, yeah, I had to start using Twitch for the video again because the oh, Discord okay. keeps going in and out. Sorry. Sorry. It, Can you it's all right. The volume down or something. Volume down. Or something. But I said it. Yeah. Was well, it doesn't matter. I'm okay. trying. You discover a brown flask filled with liquid. You throw some tricks as you taste it. And you realize you swallowed poison. Roll one combat die. A skull means you lose one mind point. You are unharmed in any other role. So. so. See, I feel like that should be a perk. Like, the alchemist should be immune to it. But, then again, in real life, how many alchemists have had accidents in their laboratory? He's got lots of mind points to spare, right? He's got lots of mind points to spare, right? Okay. So you lose one mind point, so he is down to four. Zero, he'd go into shock. But then you could just use anything that you have that would restore mind point to immediately bounce back from it. Which right now, I don't think he has anything. Okay, all right. So after the wizard, it's the elf. I think the only I think the only one that can do anything. This door can be open. Would again. be the, bar the barbarian, I think. Hmm. He's the only one with an antidote, anyway. Oh, for for poison. Yeah. 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 I mean, turning the turning the uh, poison inside his body into gold probably wouldn't uh, do anything helpful. <laughs> Little joke there. Yeah, the barbarian still has that antidote. That's true. Move the elf five spaces, please, down and around that corner. Okay. You got something higher than a two. Hey, hey. Happy Hero Quest Day. <laughs> that should be a t shirt. I rolled higher than a two. Happy Hero Quest Day. Uh, weighted dice works every time. Didn't say that out loud. Okay, so after the elf is the knight down here. Got a five. Um. How far does that? How, is there any blocks or anything down that hallway? 
Or does it go all the way? It goes all the way to the right. Uh, he's gonna move. He's gonna start moving. Five, moving that way. Go five spaces, I guess. Ah, uh, a threat card. Hey, Gonsgrim. NGL watching y'all play is making me very tempted to pick up an original copy. Well, I appreciate that because yeah, you you guys may have noticed I've started migrating back to the classic pieces for shield. Okay, so I get a, a threat card. Ooh. Hmm. That one is tempting. Hold on, hold on. Let me just see what I got here. Now nah, I'm just going to hang on to what I got. Okay. Good thought, though. At least I know what my options are. All right, it's not no immediate threat. <laughs> yeah, what I'm doing each time is I'm drawing one of these cards, and if I already have three in my hand, I either have to use one immediately or discard one. I have the remake, which is excellent, but there's something about the original sculpts. Yeah, I love the original sculpts, and I'm slowly going through and like painting them, and you know, learning how to paint. <laughs> So I'm working on them, but I haven't made any progress in several weeks. So kind of what you see is what you get for now. But I like the way the Femir's turned out, even though this isn't the original sculpt. It's kind of a classic style sculpt, more of a Warhammer uh, Femir. I honestly think the the Hero Quest pose, nothing has topped that yet. All right. Okay. Mercenary is going to move one to the right and one down. Okay. Kind of towards the secret door. Or wait, two to the right and I <laughs> guess for the swordsman. Yeah. Putting him in I keep trying to put him in that trap. Yeah. It's like, okay, boss. Uh, <laughs> not paying me enough for this. Yeah. The question why just to do or die I guess okay so there he is he's kind of in at crossways with those uh, tiles do you want him to keep moving towards the secret door or just stop there you gotta stop there and let you take your turn all right I'm not gonna not gonna move anything all right um, the barbarian is gonna move three spaces to the secret door and open it One, two, three. We got a five plus two, seven. All right, so I'm digging all the bronze gold. Yeah, thank you. Well, at first I was saying like, oh, there's no way I'm going to follow the paint scheme of the artwork. That's just so boring. That's what everyone does. But I kind of like the way it turned out. And then I thought, well, I have enough figures that I could still vary it. You know, I have one that's a tribute to the like the card arch or the box art and then others I can vary them okay so he's opening the secret door seeing what's revealed in the room so the room is revealed so there's a door and there's a treasure chest in the corner and there's a number of monsters as well There's a couple of Yeti right there, and a couple of Chaos Warriors as well. Couldn't remember where I put them. They were out celebrating, uh, but they're back. A couple of Chaos Warriors there. And we've also got a couple of polar war bears, if that wasn't enough. So, you just found yourself a brawl if you were looking for a brawl. A burly brawl, well, you might say. Did it again. 
Gonsgrim says, what I've been doing with Warhammer Quest is painting the orcs tunics different colors so players can call it a target easier. Yes, and that's kind of what I was thinking too. And even if you're just going by the official artwork, I mean, you've got three colors of orcs already. You've got orange, blue, and brown. But then, yeah, you can do other things too. I also thought I might vary their skin tones. That was another suggestion. Maybe have some with like a lighter green and some with a darker green. Because I can't decide. Like, they both look so awesome. So, I'll probably do something like that too. I got plenty of time. I'm not rushing myself. I didn't have a deadline. It's just uh, kind of fun to paint. All right, Barbarian. Anything else? Is it uh, zoom up or scroll up back to the room at the cupboard? Yeah. All right. I think it was my fault. It's my Wi-Fi. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was just commenting uh, to uh, Gonsgrim about... So when I painted the Femirs, I gave them all a different shade of red on their suspenders. But that wasn't much. So I also painted their axes different, differently. So I got a gold or gray axe. But you might not see that because on the board it's just like that. So you're like, uh, which is which? which? <laughs> So then you got to just say, oh, yeah, I want to attack the one that's by the this piece of furniture, or whatever. The one to the north. But with the Chaos Warriors, I mean, the one in the box is depicted in like steel gray, which is kind of how I think of them. But then on the monster card, they've got this like shocking blood red armor. So it's like, hmm, that kind of seems cool too. A lot of people paint them like the Halo uh, Spartans. <laughs> Got your green, your gray, your blue, pink. Jason, are you still having issues there? It's not clear. Yeah, I think I have it. I turned my Wi-Fi off, so I'm just using the the yeah data. So I hope it stops switching back and forth between the Wi-Fi in the house and the thing. I think every time it switches back and forth, I lose you. Oh dang it! So I'm gonna have you. So, I hope you've got unlimited minutes. Otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Already did that stupid plan. <laughs> um, he's gonna go up one and to the left one. Okay, this is the barbarian. Still, we're talking about. Yeah, he saw it was in there. Okay, so he moves out of the way. Gonsgrim says, I'm torn as to whether to go red like corn and to do all the Chaos God combos. Well, I was reading that that whole, like, well, they wear this color when they follow this Chaos God is not necessarily 100% cut and dried. So whatever you're wanting to do, I mean, you can pretty much just do whatever. <laughs> and it'll fit into the some version of the lore somewhere. But yeah, I mean, if you've got four Chaos Warriors, four different color schemes if you want. I've got more than four, so you can do whatever. But at least some of them are going to stay steel gray. I think they look pretty sweet, even without a lot of extra details added. Maybe his boots could be a different color. But... Okay. okay. So, what, 
Oh, sorry. I'm going to switch cameras again. Might help. Rogue. Going towards the mayhem. He's going to go up four. Straight up? Yep. Okay. He's going to stay there. One space down with the alchemist. Okay. All right. Elf. Ah, it's wrong on this screen, isn't it? It should be three one. I didn't realize it wasn't changed. Okay. Yeah, it's because I switched the order. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry about that. Let me fix that right now. Elf should go down here. Wizard goes back up here, right? Yeah. Yeah, the wizard's uh, in the middle. Ah, pushing for the elf. Thank you. Count cog box. Awesome. I just keep emphasizing that it's like he's he's on Dead's door. Aren't you gonna help him? Oh, this is not an elf potion. I'll draw again. I know it could have been with the new pack, right? Potion of Recall. Well, this is perfect for the elf. Any elf who drinks this greenish mixture regains the spell that was cast earlier during the current quest. And since 9 and 10 are continuous with each other, I would consider any spell that he casts uh, for either one of them to be to count. Okay, really good one. Okay, so Potion of Recall for the elf. Yeah, he drinks it and gets his heal body. Alright, so his heal body is restored. And he uses the heal body on himself. Right. No, wait. Yep. No, he doesn't. He's at three. Yeah. Okay, but he's got the right. heal body back. Yep. He could use it for four if he needs it. Yeah, but I think he's at, he's at three body points. Yeah. It's it's the wizard that really needs some help. Of course, if he gets over there, he could always hand it off. It's also a possibility. Uh, the elf. Let me see. Oh, I don't see the elf. There nobody, he is. Nobody can see the elf. Nobody can see the elf. He's invisible. Yeah. There he is. Right All right. Uh, yeah. Um, and then I rolled, I think it's three. Okay. Yep, three. So you're going to move three spaces to the right. One, two, three. And then we get... The night bonus monster for me. Let's 
Let's see. I can roll that type of die. Okay. Just a moment. Be right back. All right, a polar war bear appears out of the depths. Okay, so the elf did what he was going to do. And now the knight. Seven. Seven. Okay. Uh, up and to the right. Okay, seven. My turn. All right. Uh, the mercenary. Oh, I keep forgetting the mercenary. <laughs> okay, what's the swordsman going to do? It's going to go up one and to the left. Okay. Now my turn. Right? Yep. Alright. These monsters are going to attempt a feat. <laughs> An uncommon feat. They're going to try to shoot their crossbows. Actually, it would make more sense if the uh, Polar War Bear leaped across. Three, four, five. And he's going to try to batter down the door. So I'm going to roll. If it's a skull, he gets to do it. He chose to close that door. Well, yeah, I did. <laughs> I didn't think he would... You closed it right before your turn. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to close that door right before your turn either. I thought you were going to try to trap the other guys I somewhere. Know, I, I tried something different, and it didn't quite pan out what I thought. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, I would have had all my guys over here fighting them already. If Don't interrupt I didn't your open that other door and find so many it. monsters. Don't interrupt your opponent when he's making a mistake, right? Okay. Ah, he failed. So he pounds on the door, but he, he can't get out. Okay. All right, back to my other monsters. So I got plenty more to choose from. Your, your crossbowman can try to shoot him in the back and make his body fall against the door and it's have the, the door the, open up. Blood will grease the hinges and make it easier to open. <laughs> yeah. There's no honor among thieves. I don't care what they put in the title of the movie. All right, uh, let's see. I guess we'll just move the... Yeah, we'll move the Yetis in first. One, two, three, four. And he attacks the crossbowman. I mean the crossbowman. He attacks the uh, swordsman, rather. 
Oh, I'm supposed to determine if these were elite monsters. Hold on. Nope. 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 Okay. There's an elite chaos warrior in the room. Ooh, there's an elite uh, polar war bear. That's almost unfair. Almost. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah. So he attack. He's gonna attack. It's regular polar war bear. Or, I mean yeti. Yeti. Two skulls against the swordsman. Defends with five. Ching and a hit. Half damage. All right, the other Yeti is going to move in. One, two, three. Attack the Barbarian. Two skulls. Barbarian. Five defense for you. I probably do. Tangents is back. What did you say there, Jacer? What does Rally and Cry do? Uh, Rally and Cry, good question. Let me consult the skill card here one second. You Rally and Cry inspires your comrades to victory. From now until the end of the turn, each hero may roll one extra attack and defend the dice. And I would apply that to mercenaries as well. So one attack, one defend for all your allies. Okay. He's going to attempt to defend. Is he using it or not? No. Not yet. It's still your turn, right? So. Well, it could be used anytime. Uh, yeah, barbarian drops down to five. Or, ching. Be there in just a minute. Okay, sounds good, Angus. Okay. Some barbarians taking some hits. All right, I still got monsters. Thing is, okay, I'm going to move this polar war bear in one, two, three, four, five, six. front of that door there. And then Yeah, 
Now, let's see. If I put the Polar War Bear in the pit, he's going to attack with one last, but he's also going to defend with one last. That doesn't sound very good. If I move him in there, he can still be hit diagonally. Okay, so... Six. It's not much benefit. All right, I'm gonna move the Chaos Warrior in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to the corner there, and one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, the other Chaos Warrior, one, two, three, four, five. The Elite Chaos Warrior. Put him here by the door. And it's going to get awfully crowded. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, right in front of the secret door with the elite polar war bear. And that's my turn. So, barbarian. <laughs> Rally and cry affect him too. The mercenary? <laughs> yeah. The the barbarian. Oh. Let me check the card here. Each hero. So, yeah, it okay. affects you as well. Uh, he's going to use Rallying Cry and Berserker Brew. Nice. Wow. Okay. All right. So, he uses this. So, everybody gets uh, one attack and one defend. And the Berserker Brew, that gives him two extra as long as he can see monsters, which is the perfect time to use it. So, he'll be attacking with six. Two black and Two four white. Plus one. Uh, plus, plus, one. plus the one for Rally and Cry. Yeah, so 11. And they'll defend with six. Since two black and five white total. Yep. Six skulls. <laughs> That's quite a buff. Six skulls. And who is he attacking? The one right in front of him. Okay, to the right. All right, well, I can only defend three, so let's see what we can do. Nothing. Got him. You one shot at a Yeti. How cool is that? It's not something you feel. <laughs> Cocker. Oh, no, no. Fatality. Fatality. Alright, anything else for the barbarian? <laughs> uh, no. That's it, he's gonna stand his ground. Okay. Or actually, he's gonna try to taunt the uh, elite polar war bear to jump in the pit and fight him. <laughs> okay, sure. Okay. I'll allow it. You gotta roll a skull, though. No, no I didn't. didn't work. <laughs> He's elite. He's too smart for that. <laughs> yep. I should have had you roll All like right, a, so... a lesser die or something for that. Think about it. Okay. All right, Rogue. I'm here, ready to go. Hey, the Rogue is ready. OK, 
Okay, so the rogue is right here. And in <clears> case <throat> you missed it, there is a pit in front of that door. And there's slippery ice on the other side, and there's a polar war bear there. And there's another patch of slippery ice next to it, if you can see anything. And then there's a there's a uh, a pit trap right there in the room. And there's a secret door that a, an elite polar war bear is guarding. And you've got an elite chaos warrior in front of the door. You've got a suspicious square on either side of him, and then another chaos warrior in the corner. A yeti threatening the swordsman there. Oh, so you're saying it's a cakewalk. You might have to jump over some things if you... Well, yeah. I guess you wouldn't have to, because you do have... You probably need a refresher on what you've got. So the rogue is carrying a dagger, as he always does, and his hammer, of course. But he also has a longsword. Okay. And he also has a spear. So he's pretty much guaranteed to always have a, a diagonal attack. He's got his buckler, which means if his enemy misses, he gets one... A free strike with one uh, combat die. He's got a cloak and bracers. So, but because of the buff that just happened, uh, oh, and he also has a halberd. Because of the rallying cry, he would actually attack with four. Yeah, he would attack with four unless the monster is next to a, an, an ally. Then it'd be five. His defense would be six for this round, at least. And he's got three body points left. He's got quite a few potions, but his potion of strength is the only... Well, he's got the potion of battle also. So the strength would be plus two attack. Battle is one where you get to re-roll your dice if you don't like the way they are, your attack dice. Um, the rallying horn just boosts everybody's movement every time you blow it per round. So what do you think? What's it right. going to do? Give you enough choices. So there's the rogue right there. <clears throat> All right, well, let's see. So here's where I need like the overhead cam, right? Alright, so I got a 7 for movement. That... Maybe that's <clears throat> Camera's going crazy. A little more direct. <laughs> trying to come up with a view that's a little easier to discern. Yeah. Um... Who's that in front of me? Okay, so this is the knight. That's you. Okay. That's the knight. This is you. If I go one space ahead of the knight... You will have a diagonal strike. You can get a diagonal... Okay. You want to do that? Yeah. Your other option would be to drink the potion of airwalk to go on the other side of that pit trap and just throw two daggers at them. They do get a plus one because of the um, rally and cry. The dagger's still only one. You do get the second shot, but it's not a whole lot. <clears throat> but yeah, if you, if you do yeah, the well, diagonal, you could also pass. You could also pass the uh, airwalk potion to me. And then the knight could go to the other side without falling in the pit. Yeah. Um. Oh, right, yeah. I'll, Either I'll one works. The, yeah, I'll do the potion airwalk and go in space about the pit trap. Okay, because you're also able to pass through monsters, but yeah, you'd have to go through the pit and the slippery ice. Okay, so back up here. So the rogue is going to use Potion of Air Walk. So you hover on a cushion of air for one turn. And you're going to float over. One, two, three, four. And go up. 
Yes. Just the one square? Just yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then what? Unfortunately, I won't be adjacent to anybody, but... And two separate attacks, right? Well, so it should be one combined attack, but I've decided that since they created the rogue with the, the unblockable thing in mind, we're just going to say the first attack is normal, the second one is unblockable. Or I can decide which one I want to roll against for defense. Do each of those attacks get a plus one, or do only one of them get a plus one? Hmm. Only because the rallying cry is not a standard thing. Yeah. Let me see here. One extra. I think it's. Just I know one it's only extra. this turn. It's just one. So, yeah, I guess the first. We'll say the first attack will be stronger, but the second attack is unblockable. How about that? Okay. You missed. Nothing. <laughs> okay, second one. Missed again. <laughs> Dang. Need some dagger practice. Well, thankfully you've got the bandolier. You bought a new one after the first one was stolen. So you've got. Rolling didn't stick with me from Thursday. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. So that's it for the rogue. And are you taking control of any other heroes besides that? And so far, it's just you and Jason. Uh, the night, no. <laughs> um. Who else is in the room by the barbarian? Okay. Uh, Nick, uh the, barbarian. the alchemist and the swordsman. Yeah, that incredibly dark shape is the. Uh, is the alchemist there. And then the gray one is the sword. <clears throat> okay. Um, is the elf in here too or not? No, he's waiting no, for he's still... the other side. Okay. He's working his way. Yeah, the elf um, I can... is right there. And he's just he's still working his way up yeah because for yeah. the moment those monsters are stopped by the door <clears throat> but as you've We're... seen they've they've been trying to hammer their way out and where we're trying to get to or well there's two we're trying to keep them in there you kind of split the party. Yeah, well, I closed the door. I didn't realize that you were just going to run away. Um, yeah, so there's there's two crossbowmen and a floor war bear in this room with the, the huge pit. And there's a closed door that you haven't explored yet. But then over on this side, you've discovered two doors that are closed. And you discovered all these monsters. Yeah, yeah, my thought was originally to surround that area looking for doors or secret doors or another way in so I didn't have to jump the chasm. Ah, uh, okay. Well, the, the right. halberdier tried to jump the chasm. I don't know how far around I made it. It fell in. So it's pretty pretty deadly. <laughs> Just yeah, keeping the yeah, yeah lost the mercenary to that chasm. Yeah. Um, well, he's moving towards the party. He just, oh. with the, uh, plate mail, it's only one die, so he's fell behind. Yeah, they all okay. slow. Um, um, yeah, yeah. Cog Cogbox just cashed in another, uh, potion. So thank you for that. And for whoever's turn it is. Okay, so whose turn is it? Um, we just finished with the rogue. Okay. So is the wizard being controlled by Angus or Jacer? <laughs> Potion of speed. 
elf, when he drinks a syrupy brew, he can move up to 12 squares per turn instead of rolling two red dice. Well, what happens if he just rolls one? <laughs> I guess it'd be six. The elf also gets two attacks per turn. These effects end as soon as the elf suffers at least one body point of damage. <clears throat> okay. Um, well, do you want me to take the, the alchemist? This is what they call the potion of celerity in the new one. They changed the name, but it's the same thing. Yeah, oh, that way it doesn't right interfere with the other's potion of speed. I suppose not. <laughs> okay. Yeah, people are confused. Uh. Okay. Let's put elf speed. That's easier to remember. Okay. So you're taking the alchemist, Angus? Yeah. Okay. All right. And you also have the rogue. And then Jacer has elf, barbarian, knight, and the swordsman. Okay. Sorry, whose turn is it? Uh, it would now be the alchemist. Okay. Unfortunately, I couldn't get you to jump in the pit, so <laughs> nobody for him to poke with his stick. <laughs> um, what? If I'm a spells. Ah. Yes, as far as your spells go, you've got Swift Wind. And I think that's, that's it. You do have a sling. I keep forgetting that you're armed with a sling that uh, is long range. It's only one die, though. Can he hit the elite guy from there? Yes. In the doorway? Yep. He sure can. He's only rolled three dice of defense. It's possible he could get through. He does have a potion of strength, which would be plus two for one attack. All right, let's see. He looks like he's in a good spot there, so... That it's sling is three. No, the sling is just one. One. Unless, unless he's using that potion, then I was saying it would boost it to, to. Well, yeah, it would boost it to three just for that one attack. Is that what you want to do? Yeah. Um, I'll give it a shot with just doing normal. Okay. So roll your one combat die. It's a skull. There you go. David, work for David against Goliath. Let's try it. No defense. So he actually took a hit. Now he's only, he's got five left, but he took a hit. Woohoo! <laughs> it's always amazing when he gets uh, gets some damage in. Wizards are sneaky like that. Yep. Nobody takes him too seriously until all of a sudden they're bleeding. Okay. All right, and after the wizard is the elf. So, Jacer, let's get you back on camera here. Okay, that potion lasts until I take damage? Yes. Get, uh, all right, I'm going to take that potion then. Okay. And move six spaces to the right. And you could do two attacks per turn, so that would always be if you're taking if you're hitting the same target, it combines it into one big attack. 
or you can attack two, two targets you can see. All right. Okay. Now the knight. It was right here. You gotta move to the right and attack diagonally. Okay, attacking the polar war bear through the doorway. Fortune's longsword. And that is the wandering monster, right? Oh. Yes, yes. So it'll be one black, two, two white. Thanks for reminding me. One. One skull. No defense. It's another hit. Or one hit for him. I guess he wasn't wounded before. Now he is. Oh, wait. I gotta roll an extra die. Oh, for yeah. the rallying cry. Yeah. Uh, just a, a white one, I guess, right? Yeah, just roll one more. That'd be fine. It was same thing. But Meant to be. Now you have a wrestling move. No, it was three skulls and a shield. Oh, wait. Is it? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, You're right. I already tried um, and, and failed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's going to definitely... Uh, oh, he's going to stun him through the door. All right. Okay, another point of damage. The swordsman attacks. Okay. So it would be five. So three skulls. Three skulls. Making the most of this. Oh, too bad I wasn't a hero. Three hits. Right. Three more. Oh, three hits. He, he was an undamaged one. I don't yeah. think. He just got two more body points left. Okay. It's gonna move it all or my turn. You um, gotta stay there. Alright. Okay, so these monsters are going to try to batter their way out the door. So first, the Polar War Bear is going to attempt an uncommon feat to smash through the door. And he failed. Or no, he succeeded at the skull. Ah, so he smashes through the door. He's crashing, crashing down on the hinges. Okay, so now he can leave the room. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's doing the elf. And the crossbowmen are going to leap across. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think they should have to roll for the chasm. Three, I don't four, think it five, should count as a normal pit trap. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it apparently does for them. Yeah, no. Kind of sucks. I mean, if they voluntarily entered the pit, they would die, but why would they ever do that? <laughs> Maybe if it was a skeleton and you had the bone wand or something. Okay. Yeah. I get... uh, I'll just take a, maybe, maybe a different, uh, more risk. I guess, thing where it's only, yeah, more risk. More or less risk for them because they're used to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that floor war bear is not in a good place. I could move him. 
All right. Well, first, uh, first, I'm gonna have the Yeti, the Yeti attack swordsman. They get extra defense dice too this turn, or is it just yeah. the attack dice? Yeah, and okay. just this is the last one, the next part. The one skull. Oh, yeah, yeah, because the barbarian's turn is is after the monsters. Right. Okay, all right, so that didn't do much. All right, and then he's gonna move. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Out of the room there. Yeah, lots of big monsters crowded into a room and they're all balancing on teetering piles of skulls. <laughs> okay, uh, now let's get... Um, Yeah, let's get the elite polar war bear in there. One, two. <coughs> He's gonna attack the barbarian with both of his attacks. And he is an elite, so he uses black dice. Eight black dice. Five skulls. God. I like the negotiations going on with Zargon. Well, yeah. It's part of the game. Wow. Okay, so or she does. Okay, so you take one damage, but you get a wrestling move. Alright, he, he's doing a choke slam. Down to four. So can, he, can he do a um, uncommon button. feat and have him choke slam him down into the hole? Into the pit? <laughs> I know he won't take an extra point of damage, but, but can he do that? Put him into the bit. Sure, sure. Roll your, uh, with the skull, you get to do it. Okay. Yeah! <clears throat> Slam him over here. Clunk. Taking two damage total. Okay. Okay, but you are down to four body points. Yeah, we must have part of Plans within plans. Layers of strategy. Okay. Uh, let's see what else do I have here. Hmm. All right. I'm going to have the Chaos Warrior move forward and attack the Swordsman. Two skulls. So we get six. Ching. Oh, he died. Because he was already damaged, yeah. No, oh, there goes my shield. Goodbye, meat shield. We need to go back and find out how many mercenaries we've lost. A lot. Okay. If it isn't double digits, I'll be surprised. It's it's more I think, than oh, it's, it's it's more than double digits. I lost count somewhere after nineteen. Yeah, I think we were up to at least twenty three <laughs> yeah. over the course of the whole campaign. And yet they still want to get hired by us. Twenty three twenty three have wait, I think twenty three have died in this double quest alone. Wow. Yeah, so without our interactivity that would have been impossible because you could only could have hired twelve, but <laughs> we're not necessarily there were 19 with yeah there was 19 of them that i named oh man i stopped naming them <laughs> yeah okay so the uh oh i've got an opening now yeah the shield like you were saying one two three four the elite chaos warrior moves in to attack the alchemist 
Okay. Four black dice. Two skulls. Yikes. But you do still get the benefit, so you get to roll five, uh, roll four white and one green. Four white, one green? Yeah. Because you have the alchemist cloak. All right, say it again. Four white, one green. Locked and good. Uh, too bad it wasn't a regular white shield. <laughs> I know, I was thinking that too. Yeah, show off a little bit. Okay, so you deflect... Yeah, the wizard doesn't get many wrestling moves. <laughs> no. One, two, three, four. Well, let's see. No, I guess I moved the... I moved the Yeti out of the room at the beginning. And I could move that final Polar War Bear. One, two, three, four, five. He's gonna get killed, but I'll try it anyway. One, two, three, four. Just keep printing bigger boards and bigger, bigger monsters, bigger figures and bigger boards. It just never ends. Okay. All right. He's just normal, so he's just gonna do his double attack against the barbarian. Five skulls. Oh, shit. Oh. Four hits. Four hits. And he's dead. Uh, yes, he is. So he has to use his hidden reserves. Okay. Rallying Cry is used up too, by the way. So he comes back with two. Ah, Fubar. Holy hug time. What happened since last week? Hey, Fubar. He's getting giving away potions like nobody's business. Drawing on hidden reserves of endurance, you shrug off wounds that might kill lesser men. So that's used up. Okay, so you're back with two, and then Fubar has just generously purchased multiple potions. I'm trying to send potions. Okay, all right. We'll start uh, redeeming those potions here, and you can tell us who you want to get them. Thanks, Fubar. Okay, so the first one is a potion of magic resistance, which stops damage from spells. And second... Wolfsbane potion, which will cure you if you turn into a werewolf. <laughs> Strange bus to the rescue. <laughs> because it, it's random, you don't know, right? So Strange Bus is cashing in a potion. Thank you. Uh potion of restoration. Uh well we'll draw one lost body point and one lost mind point. Okay, so who who needs the healing? I think the alchemist needs the restoration. Because he's down well, both body points job, and mind job, points. Not that they'll help. Well, he wants to give it to you as the barbarian. But let's see. What is the barbarian has two? The barbarian has two one d sixes. Okay, so who should get it instead? Um. Well, I was thinking the alchemist because he's lost his meat shield, and he can use the mind points and the body points. Ah, because he's down to four now. Is that cool with you, Fubar? Restoration. So one and one. Oh man, lots of submitted potions, huh? Spread them out then. Well, you got yeah, skill cards for heroes, potions, uh, equipment. <laughs> You've got some some choices there. Okay. Yeah, you can see the body points displayed on the screen. Who's got what? Okay, so after that, I think that's really all 
Let's see, did I move these guys already? I've got so many monsters now. Yeah, I think that was it. Okay. All right, back to the back to the barbarian. Can I donate a cart to hold said potions? <laughs> it's like bandoliers of potions. So it's Wolfsbane. Um, the restoration. What and what was the uh, the first one? Oh, Res magic, magic resistance uh, for damage. Magic. All right, magic resist. Yeah, who wants that one? Uh, I'll just give it to the barbarian. Okay. <clears throat> That's fine. I think everybody else already has magic resist. He's got magic resist for an effect, but nothing for damage yet, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, and so then uh, Wolfsbane, who gets that? If we ever get to Mage of the Mirror or something like that, or if we ever encounter a werewolf. Well, the Alchemist has one. Uh, maybe give it to the rogue. Sure, okay. Alright. And then once again, restoration to the alchemist, right? Yes. <laughs> and a singing donkey to pull the cart that has the potions in it. <laughs> Indeed, the donkey will complete it. I like to think there's invisible porters that are carrying your extra gear. They just don't get acknowledged in the story. Okay. All right. Barbarian? All right. Right in the thick of things. Yeah. So I He's going to attack the one in the hole. The berserker effect. Okay, attacking the one in the five hole. skulls. Yes. Okay. There you go. That'll put a hurting on him. Yeah, I think he uses, he uses two of the green dice, though. I think I think he's an elite one. Uh, will be blue, but yeah. Oh, blue. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Count Cogpox just redeemed a potion. The barbarian would need to wear the donkey head as a hat if that happens. Oh, <laughs> I missed the conversation. Fubar says, but if it needs to be one that is just annoying enough that the party would seriously consider eating it, the donkey, to save their sanity, the barbarian would then wear that donkey head as a hat if that happens. Strangest bus, redeemed donkey pulled both card for hero. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's draw another potion here before I get too sidetracked with amusement. Potion of Dexterity. So that gives you five movement squares to your next die roll or guarantees one successful pit jump. You may only use this potion once per turn should you have more. Okay, who gets the Potion of Dexterity? Uh, I'd say the, the elf needs it the most. Uh, I'll just say maybe the elf so we can uh, outpace everything coming at him. Right, plus the other, the two pit traps are coming up, and if he takes any damage, he loses that six movement every turn and the two attacks. So yeah, give it to the elf. Ah. Okay. All right, where was I? Oh, I got to defend against that attack here. You got five skulls, got dang. Five skulls. Okay, and I'm only rolling two. Rolling two. Ching. Ching! Donkey card is the new expanded Donkey hero set coming out. The donkey card. Hey, you know, all kinds of things are possible. Okay, so I blocked one and I took four damage. Wow. All right, so he's uh, down to one. No, he's dead. The one in the pit? Oh, he's dead. Yeah. Oh, oh yes, the wrestling move. You're down. right. Got him. 
Oh, one bites the dust. Add that to gold set. Oh yes, the uh, the gold edition of Hero Quest that comes with all kinds of fancy stuff. It's like the Monopoly where they give you the tokens, but they're like fourteen karat gold or something. I hear they brought back the thimble and gave us a dinosaur. Whatevs. So many versions of Monopoly nowadays. Okay. All right. Anything else, Barbarian? Uncommon feat. Okay. Dare I ask, what's the uncommon feat? Strange West. Barbarian swings, donkey pulls, potion card at enemy. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I normally am pretty lenient. I'm going to say no. No, I can't do that. No, it's Hasbro. They're sold separately. But you can use the gold without the donkey cart. And the donkey cart doesn't get its buffs without the gold. Aww. <laughs> the thing is, though, we know about the donkey cart because... Uh, Jacer, don't didn't you paint one, or was that somebody else that posted that? No, that was just that was just the donkey from Shrek. Yeah, but there was uh there was a little like little I didn't... page. Oh, I just put them together in my head after you said that. <laughs> Expected so, but it was worth it. Yeah, it's always worth it. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. You never know. The rule of cool, but I decided that wasn't cool enough. But yeah, it's like, what's your character? Well, it's a it's a donkey with a cart. And he always has to pull it pull it around. I mean, there is that there is that miniature Oswald the Overladen where it, he's just a guy like schlepping like a whole bunch of like gear. And they made another one, a female version. So could be could be in the works. And if somebody brings it to the table, what are you gonna say? No, we can't use that. Oh, that's that's not that's not up to regulation. Don't worry, strange bus. We'll get that donkey attack. Well, if you did, you'd make an ass of yourself. Got him. Okay. Anyway. I've got the Shrek. I've got Fiona and two of the dragons, but I never picked up Donkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If there were any kids listening, I apologize. It's a, it's a jackass. <laughs> got him. Got him. Go get a donkey now. <laughs> Oh. And then scratch build a cart. Oh, you both. <laughs> Got him! <laughs> you both redeemed it. Nice. All right. Okay. Uh, gotta stay, stay, stay alert. Okay. What's, uh, what's next? So the barbarian. Uh, it should be optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the rogue. Yeah. What about the? Rogue? after the barbarian. I mean the rogue. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, straighten that up. I'm going to say from here, he cannot throw anything at the Yeti. Yeah, it's about what I figured. Hey, it's Slap Happy Hero Quest Day. <laughs> yep, it sure is. Your question okay, comes so... once a year. Actually, it's every week. So you got a pit right, trap. Refresh in front my memory of you. on jumping traps or jumping pits. Yeah. I so... roll that die, right? Yeah, because your potion of airwalk has worn off. So. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have to roll one one to white die and avoid rolling a skull because I don't think you have anything special otherwise to get over it. You're at three body points. And then on top of that, there's slippery ice on the other side. Yeah, falling on the slippery ice means that you can't do anything, you... including defend yourself. And I've so got a they get there. Their... They get you hit, yeah, hit for, for free. free, so it's worse than being free. in the pit. Yeah. You've got a healing. Club. At least, hey, also attempt to jump the ice. 
Yes, you can. But to jump two squares, you're going to have to roll a, a white shield on one die. White shield? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You, you leaped <laughs> across. <laughs> Landing right there successfully and you can thank the author what was her name i can't remember her name uh the author the original author of the uh elf quest pack they nixed some of her early ideas but that's one of the double jump okay all right now what all right okay so that's three so two spaces and up one into the corner And I guess I'll throw a dagger at it. Okay. I was going to say you could throw a spear at it. That would be two dice, but I mean, then you lose the spear. But yeah, or, or just throw two daggers. Yep. He did a Palpatine into that room. <laughs> ah! Like corkscrew. Okay, so you're throwing your daggers. Wait, did you just did you just roll both of them? Uh, that was just one. Oh. Oh, hit one miss. Oh, okay. So you you hit one and the other one missed. Okay. Okay. So I'll defend now. Nothing. Four. Oh, I got one left. <clears throat> Whittling them down. The Yeti. Okay. Alchemist. It's not in a very good spot right there. Let's, let's see. I can use the. What's he got? The, the wizard staff, right? Yeah. And yeah. that would be two black oh, dice. You got a potion of strength. If he uses that, that'll be plus two to one attack. So it'll be two black, two white if he used it. You want to do that? Or just do the regular attack? Yeah, just regular. Okay. One hit. Okay. Or one skull. I still get to defend with four. Oh, whoops. Hold on. I forgot the elite one. I roll four blue. Okay, same result. Ching. So I defended successfully. No damage. Let's remember that's an elite right there. What is it? The barbarian is in a pit right there. Uh, he's next to a pit. Next to a pit. Okay. It's a crowded room. Tough, tough spot to be in. Yeah. Every time I hear your microphone, it it sounds like one of those. Um, like computers from the 90s, you know, where the hard drive would kind of like go. It's kind of reminds me of that. Oh, I wonder if it's picking up the computer that my other computer is sitting on. Uh, could be. Maybe. I keep thinking it's something printing. <laughs> What's your dot matrix printer going to? Yeah, I didn't think it would pick that up. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a all-in-one monitor sitting on top of a uh, desktop. Okay. Uh, I, I 
guess he'll stay there. Well, because he could move to this other square, but he's still flanked by monsters, so... You'd have to try to jump the pit, <clears throat> and then... Yeah. Yeah, you gotta jump the pit, and then... Brave the ice. Try not, try not to fall down on the ice. Um, he's going to go hide in that cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Are you uh, serious? No, no. Okay. An uncommon feat? <laughs> like if he fails, he'll get trapped in there for one turn. But I guess or maybe or worse, I'll be uh, in between two Chaos Warriors. Yeah, they'll start shaking the cupboard with him inside it. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's I'm good. All right. So it's eight o'clock. This was the normal time I was going to finish, but um, if you guys are good, we could we could keep playing a little longer. Is that cool? Because I know we spent a lot yeah. of time talking at the start, waiting for you, and I want you to get your get your money's worth. It's a free stream. Okay. <laughs> good. All right. Okay. Maybe go another hour. See how we're doing. Okay. So next we've got the elf. Elf. Switch cameras here. So the elf shoots. Wow. Three skulls. What is he shooting with? Uh, he gets two attacks, and he said I had to do a combined attack. Oh, yeah, for the... You're right, you're right. I was like, dang, I forgot about that. Okay, so three skulls, amazing. Okay. <clears throat> Ching, two hits. <coughs> Polar War Bear. He's got four left. Yeah, that is a that great, is great buff. He moves six spaces north. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Straight up, right? Yes. Okay. All right, and then the night. Uncommon feet, barbarian or wizard fires something at the cupboard's base. It will fall forward, crushing the two warriors. That's what Fubar says. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say if that, if you guys want to try that, if it works, it'll do damage, but it's not gonna kill them. <laughs> uh, Count Cogbox redeemed an upgrade to a monster. Nice. Okay. Well, first decide. Are you gonna attempt that? his idea with the cupboard. Sure. I'll give it a shot. Okay. Now, what are you going to fire at it, though? Uh, maybe the fire lance, if yeah, they, one of them it. has that. Okay, well, first try it. And if you fail, you're going to waste the spell. Just saying. But you have the potential to damage two monsters. Oh, it worked. Okay. You shoot it, and it falls down. Crash. And a flaming wreckage. <laughs> knocking the bullet. Silly. And they each take a point of damage. Okay, we'll cross off the fire lance. I didn't think it would work. <clears throat> the uncommon I bought not come through, and yes, just damage. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't looking. Uh, I saw uncommon feed, and then I was kind of waiting, and then I didn't I didn't check back. So sorry about that. Yeah. Um, okay, and then Cogpox got an upgrade to a monster. Let's see what we should do. Like these things aren't tough enough as it is. <laughs> right. He said sorry. He didn't say slash not sorry. 
Uh, let's, uh, let's upgrade this crossbowman to an elite. So the gray crossbowman is now an elite. Over here. <laughs> no worries, I'm just not seeing the alerts pop up in the feed. Could just be me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, and sometimes it's the opposite. Like, I won't see them. So I'll periodically check the queue to see if anybody has, like, sent something through. And I just missed it. So, yeah, I'll try to acknowledge it so that you don't think something's wrong with the system. Just acknowledge the issue. Yeah, I keep trying to remember to click over to Twitch to uh, click on my uh, channel points. Yep. How's my audio now? Sounds fine. Great. That other noise is gone? Nah, it's still there, but it doesn't bother me. It kind of reminds me oh, okay. back in the day, just being in the library. It's nice and quiet using the computer. <laughs> Oh, uh, no. It's fine. Blair? Now it sounds okay. like you ripped a big piece of tape off of a microphone. <laughs> That's what I did. I took that post-it off. Maybe that was... Uh, maybe it's vibrating and it's picking that up? Hmm. I don't know. It's amazing. Powerful. Yeah. <clears throat> you could get one of those uh, little foam things if there's some place for it to fit over. So it kind of gives it a nice, like, muffled, I don't know, noise canceling. <laughs> Cheap. <laughs> That's what I do. I just put some hot glue and I lean in my microphone headset. Okay. All right. Uh, sorry, I'm getting a little tired here. Um, so we got the monster upgrade. And then, okay, the elf had already moved. So the knight. We're on the knight. The knight got ten. Ten. Salt and pepper shakers. Um, I'm hearing other noises. I guess no matter what you do, there's always going to be some background noise. He's going to move two spaces to the left, three spaces to the left, and one space down. Kind of block the elf in case those crossbowmen start shooting. Ah, yes. I don't know what else to do for him. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so back to me. All right, so the elite Chaos Warrior is going to attack the Alchemist. Three skulls. And you defend with three white, one green. Three white, one green. Are you guys hearing me? Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Forgot I muted myself when I was making some noise. No. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying to give you a hard time. It's like, just maybe you didn't know. 
I guess the the computer sound was fine. Bring it back. Well, you could uh, get a noise canceling thing that like Strange Buff has. I don't know if those are available on phones or whatever you've got wireless system, but if you try to yell, it just cuts you off. <laughs> Yes, every time you try to uh, bolt out the bank cast. <laughs> Count Cogpox redeemed a bonus mercenary for the heroes. Okay, cool. So what's it going to be? You want me to roll for it again? Or roll for it. Okay. one okay what well, was the one again pretty sure that's going to be a scout but let me just double check out of my table here oh no it's a crossbowman okay All right, so who gets the crossbowman? Does it matter? I say that the crossbowman in the back changes sides. <laughs> I'm going to say no to that. Uh, okay. But, but he could pop up, like, next to your party. I guess everybody's kind of together now, so... Um... Yeah, maybe have him come around one of them corners or something. Oh, yeah, that's true. Since there's so many different twists and turns. Yeah, so he just kind of comes around the corner. Do, do, do. There he is. Couldn't see him before. He finally caught up. Thanks, Count Cockbox. Keeps it interesting. <clears throat> it's Pete Paulson. <laughs> yep. And if he was an elite, he'd be called Leet Paulson. Okay, so got to do my monsters. Okay, so we did the. Um... Oh, yeah, you were supposed to roll for defense. So I got three skulls against the alchemist. You want to roll your... Oh, sorry. Three white, one green. Three white, one green. Yep. Cha-ching, and then one hit. And he's dead. Oh, I almost got a wrestling move. Almost. All right. What does he have to save himself? He has the healing plus two, or he's got the potion of restoration one, or he's got the uh, rejuvenation one d six. He took that off the elf. Took it off the elf. Alchemist should be a two now. Okay, the plus two. Oh, uh, you took the damage off the elf. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I guess I just wanted to kill uh, so, him that badly. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so Alchemist is yeah, you're right. two points now. Two body. Yeah. My bad. Sorry, I was like, wait, wait a minute. How did, how did I lose three when it only was one? <laughs> Nobody died. I'm so disappointed. Uh, what if they say they'll pay him double? He's a merc after all. Ah, see, now you're thinking Fubar. So, you see, you got to package your, your pitch when you start out. But, yeah, yeah. think about it next time. <laughs> 
Well, there is the, the lure of chaos that does happen. Get into a bidding war with the uh, ones who hire the mercenaries. Okay. All right, so after that, let's see. I think the lore of chaos tends to overpower the, the mm -hmm. greed of money. <laughs> Just the simple greed. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to move this, this regular chaos warrior over here to attack the barbarian. Two skulls. <clears throat> Once again, that's five defend Ooh. dice. Four. That would have been. Time for skulls. <laughs> yeah, no. Took damage. So you took one. Yeah, I took. Yep. And down to one. Yeah. Gotta turn Carl Casey back on. Okay. All right. Now the polar war bear is going to attack. Double attack against the barbarian. Only two skulls out of all that. Ching and hit. Oh, I blocked one of them. So I go down. You go down. And drink a potion. Oh, you got plenty of choices. Uh, you get a couple of 1d6s. Oh, I guess. That's what you got. Yeah, I was going to say, that's all I got left is the D6s. That's, ooh, six. Ah. Best you can do. Okay, so we'll cross one of those off. Down to my last healing potion. I can still attack the elf. One, two, three, four, five, six. You gotta be careful because I'm badly damaged here. At least if you attack the elf, then the rogue can run out there and try to finish him off. Or the or the knight. Yeah, anybody you want to can take a crack at him. Two skulls, elf. Wrestling move. Four shields. All right. Mm. And elf. two in a tombstone. Tombstone pile driver. Yes. Bam. Got him. For some reason, when he was holding him down for the three count, he was like sticking his tongue out. It looked really weird. But hey, got the job done. Who am I to argue? <laughs> All right, so you eliminated the Yete. The Yete! Okay, uh, other monsters. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four. Five. Okay, we're going to move the polar war bear. Okay. 
One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna go with the crossbowman. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the elite crossbowman is gonna fire at the knight. Or could he hit the elf? Mm, it looks like he can only hit the knight. Three skulls. So knight. I messed up. One green and five white. Yeah, I know. I th I thought about it afterwards. But White. Well, it's like you can roll that. <laughs> so if you missed it, you probably want to re-roll. You take accept this. Oh, it was oh, worse. That's worse. It was worse. Yeah. Okay. So you take three damage. So down to four for the night. Yep. It's still brutal. And yet, but the other crossman didn't shoot me. Not yet. He's way back. He's way. Oh, okay. Range. Let's see. Oh, okay. All right. One, two, I three, missed, four, I missed five, that. six. Yeah. So I'm done. I had a lot of monsters to move. A lot to think about. Yeah, I think we should probably call it at nine. So for me, that's uh, like 40 minutes. All right, so the Barbarian is gonna attack the Polar War Bear. Okay. So two black, four white. Don't move from again. Where did these pillows come from? Two skulls. Two, Two hits. Come. Come. Zipper, come. All right, so we've got two, two left. Ethan, you stay right there, okay? Okay, don't touch the thrill, it's not. Alright, what next? That's all I got for the Barbarian. Alright. Rogue? Let's see. Ooh, next up. All right. Um. Yeah, Fubar. Uh, quick comment. So he says, anyone looked at the new free quest they released today? No spoilers, but it reads like you're not familiar with the game, and the author must have been thinking it was more D and D than. Hero Quest, a lot of extra flavor text. Well, the flavor text thing kind of lends credence to the, sorry, not to get on a big rant here, leads credence to the theory that maybe Sir Ragnar was not originally part of the story. <laughs> I mean, or maybe not, because it's like, well, they must have thought afterwards, oh, there isn't enough story text, we need to add some more. But it's too late, so we'll just put it in digital format. I mean, maybe. Um, New Beginnings had a lot of flavor text, and it was supposed to be like a first quest, like a, because I thought the trial was too hard. So maybe they're thinking a lot of people are gonna buy, like, go out and buy the game system and Rise of the Dread Moon together, because the price has dropped quite a bit in the game system. Maybe that's what they're thinking, or that you're gonna be introducing it to a lot of new people. Maybe. But yeah, otherwise, why would they need to do that? 
say, oh, Chaos Warriors, I've heard of these guys, they're pretty tough, you, know, you better watch out, <laughs> you know, something like that. Yeah, yeah, I haven't looked at it super detail other than just to see it. It's a lot easier than the first quest, but it's still, you know, fairly challenging, I would say, from the look of it. Okay, sorry about that. I uh, just wanted to acknowledge that discussion. Probably have much more to say in the next like week or two as I'm thinking more about the the new pack. Okay, Zangus got a twelve. All right, I I don't remember moving. Wasn't I up in the corner? Oh, I might have knocked your figure, like knocked it that way. Okay, sorry. Okay. All right, so. Ugh, that's a whole lot of jumping to get through there. Let's see. All right, well, let's see what happens. I'll get a step and then. It's what? One combat die for each of those ice spaces I want to try and get over, right? Well, now, wait a minute. Are you trying to get into the room with the Barbarian, or are you trying to go out in the corridor? Yeah. Yeah, trying to get back in with the Barbarian. Okay, well, then you only need or to go into the room right? with the Barbarian. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. Yeah. Well, you'd only have to cross one ice square, right? I mean, there's a lot of ways you could do it, but I was just thinking, like, if you go one, two, three, four, jump over this one, and try to jump over the pit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or unless you're just trying to try to move to the ice. Yeah. But you're going to be vulnerable. Of course, why would I do that? Why would I go over there with a weak attack? But you'd have no defense. So you got to decide. Yeah, so it might be a month before we get to Rise of the Dread Moon as an actual, like, activity. I mean, I'll probably try to read the stuff in between, just kind of like familiarize myself with it, see what other people are posting about it. All right, so if I go forward one, down one, forward one, or, you know, okay, from there, can I see our war bear? Can I be able to, can I be able to check a dagger at him without yeah, I'm gonna seeing see. the barbarian? Yeah, I'm going to say you can hit him. All right, I'll do that. All right. Because so if I go up one more, then I won't be able to. Right. So that means you he's next to a uh, hero, so you throw two. Well, you'd roll another one. Okay, so Ooh. you completely missed, so now your second attack, you roll two more. Or is it just one more? Yeah, just one more. Sorry, sorry. One more. Okay, so that's a skull. All right. So I get to defend against it. Sometimes I forget, like, how his bonuses work. Okay, so no defense. That's another hit. Four, so five. So he's got one left. Polar War Bear has one left. <clears throat> Pulling him down. Yep. That's how this goes. Okay. Knight. All right. Or no, wait a minute. I skipped the. Oh, yeah. The alchemist. Well, yeah, I skipped the alchemist too. <laughs> I skipped everybody. Okay, Alchemist. Let's see. Got two monsters within sight. You both got. I believe one has one and the other one has two. Uh, they both take in one damage. They just have one? Okay. So they each have two left. Three body point monster. 
The elite has better um, defense. So I'll, I'll just keep hitting the elite one. Okay. Two black dice. There was, there was two, right? Yeah, two black dice. Two black. That's right. Ooh, yeah. Alright, so I defend with four blue. Wow, oh, nothing. Got him. That mic hit. Kill the elite gas warrior. Ah, oh, take that. Now, an elite cast warrior mm. would be one of the Doom Guard, but then what if there was an elite Doom Guard? What would he be? I don't know. All right, that's good for the wizard alchemist. Dread guard. What? Death guard. The dread guard. <laughs> Death guard. Yeah, dread guard. Dread guard. Cyber demon. I don't know. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Um, elf. I mean, unless you want to move. I think that's still a good spot for him. Now the elf. All right, the elf is gonna move one space to the right and shoot at the elite crossbowman. Okay. Three skulls. That'll leave a dent. Yeah. I'm hoping, but the blue dice scare me. Oh, still got two. Nice. Killed them. He was looking through the, the little sight on his crossbow, and it went right through the sight and got him. <laughs> nice. That thing is, you didn't see it coming. Mm -hmm. Bad thing is, he did see it coming. Knight got a six. So he's going to go five spaces down and attack the other crossbowman that decided he didn't want to join my side. Two skulls. Nothing. Got him. Okay. Um, can you move the crossbowman as close as you can to the the Yeti? The Yeti. Hopefully, they're gonna line up a shot. You mean the polar war bear down here? Oh, that's what it is, polar war bear. Yeah. One, uh, two, three, four, five, six. Mm. I would say he could hit him. Some people would disagree. All right, I'm going to roll a die to see if he can hit him or not. If it's a skull, he can hit him, and he'll take his attack. Nope, he can't hit him. So then, if he can't get a shot, he's going to go up one space and to the right instead of going down. Okay. You could have been rich, Stab, but now you're dead. 
are dead. And uh, that's it. We're in. Can't, like I said, you can't get a shot and can't get in there to attack. Okay. Uh, turn then Let's see Uh, Polar War Bear is going to maneuver around to one, two, three, four, five, and attack the Alchemist. The double attack. Three skulls. Three skulls. So, can do it. Yep. So three, three white, one green. Three white, right? Yep. No. Nothing. Dead again. Ow! Kill off the elf this time. Alright, you got a few choices here. You've got your restoration, which is one and one, or you've got your rejuvenation, where you roll one. Uh, I'll, I'll try rolling. Alright, 1d6. 1, 6. All you need is four, but it would. Hmm. Oh, I got a space in there. Yeah. Four. Wow, just what you needed. Nothing wasted. Okay, so the potion of rejuvenation is used up. Hey, you got it. Okay. Um, now the Chaos Warrior is just going to attack the Barbarian. Two skulls, Barbarian. Two shields. Perfect. All right. Okay, and then down here, the Polar War Bear is going to turn around and attack. Oh, interesting. My choice of targets. Knights down to four. It's pretty powerful. Two, three, four, five, six. I can't reach the elf. Seems like a surefire kill. All right, one, two, three, four. Attack the crossbowman with full fury of two attacks. Three skulls and a wrestling move. Okay, so roll your three dice. Ching, but then I'd, I'd still get to do a hit. So oh, you get two hits and a wrestling move. <sighs> it's a finisher. Fatality. And then uh, got him. Got him. 
So Pete Robertson hardly knew him. Okay, that's it for me. It's dust. Another one's gone. Another one's gone. Got a bite of dust. All right. The um, barbarian attacks. What is it? The Yeti? The Yeti? There's no Yetis, but Polar War Bears. Polar War Bears. Because I'm using the, uh, the remake version. Look how much bigger the original is from the remake. Less crowded, less cramped, that's probably what they were thinking. Still looks cool though. One guy just looks like a bruiser. Three skulls. If I get the perfect camera angle. Two skulls. Two skulls. Three skulls. Why don't I see it on my screen? Oh, it must be a delay. Okay, so which which uh, polar war bear is being attacked? The one in the corridor? Or the one in the room? Uh, the one next to the barbarian. Oh, of course. Or of a diagonal course. from the barbarian. Of course. Okay. Yeah, there was a delay and I got all confused. Okay. Ching and a hit. Two hits. Two hits. Yeah, I think that's gonna be it for him. Got him. Oh, right. I prolong the inevitable. Blade will finish me. He will kill him. Alright, he'll move two spaces to where the polar war bear was. And then he's going to stand on the body and taunt the Chaos Warrior. Tell him that he's next. Wow. That's some bravado right there. Who's your barbarian? Who's your barbarian? <laughs> and, and he stumbled and now he's sitting on the body of the, uh, <laughs> the thing bouncing up and down like a trampoline because <laughs> he got lost. Bumblers bounce. Okay. But that uh, takes it to the uh, rogue's turn. Rogue. Oh, let's see. Can you get an angle on that Chaos Warrior now that I'm out of the way? I'm thinking not, not quite. But if he moved over one square, he could. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll move the right one square. Some would disagree, but I'm gonna say, yeah, he can. He's just that darn good. So you get two dice and then one day. One of them's unblockable. Two skulls. And then roll one more. Well, obviously I'm gonna roll against the first one. Not the two hits. <laughs> Got him. Perfect. Perfect. You saved the wizard. <laughs> Excellent. Well done. Oh, your one, uh, the one hey, trap question hey, mark slid over. over. Thank you. All right, that'll do it for the rogue.
Um. Uh, wizards uh, wiping off War Baron and Red Warrior guts and goo. Guess we probably don't want to to. We don't want to search for treasure till everybody's in here. Yeah, if you want, go in that secret door room and search that room for traps. That sounds like a plan. Forward two and down two. Or the right two and down two. Okay. So you're in the secret secret door room. And I'll search for traps. Hoping that it's a secret store room. Uh okay, you search the room for traps. That chest looks suspicious. Alright. We got a suspicious looking trap in or a chest in here. <laughs> the barbarian over here is and he's like and... I'm, I'm I tell you I'm completely natural. And it kinda looks embarrassed. <laughs> Probably swings the lockpick like a sword, too. <laughs> uh, right. so that brings it's it to the the, uh, the elf. Yep. The el elf shoots oh, five skulls. Oh my god! Splat. Four hits. Four, five, six. Yep. <laughs> Gone. Got him. And then I uh, uh let's see the elf. So you killed the last monster. I'm actually going to attempt to jump the pit trap. Okay. I know he's going to he's going to land on the ice, but he's going to try the pit trap. Okay. Shield. Uh, one, two, three, four, and then he's on the ice. And he doesn't fall. And then he takes a step to the right. And 
and does fall. Clunk. Okay. His next turn, he'll get up. Uh, the knight moves towards the elf. to the pit yeah that's good for him and then, and then uh, you get to draw a card yes I do 10 minute warning All right, back to you, Barbarian. All right, he's going to move to the treasure chest room and attempt to disarm. One, two, three, four, five. Where do you want to be in the room? Do you care? Uh, you can put him right next to the treasure chest. Six, seven, eight. And he's going to try to disarm it? Yes, he is. He pulls out the lock pit. He swings it around in a circle and jams it at the treasure chest. <laughs> and he got a black shield. Okay, so it's disarmed. <laughs> Dumb luck wins again. <laughs> All right, so it was a, a poison needle. Had it triggered, it would have done two body points of damage. So you've disarmed it. Deflected the poison needle with the lock pick. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, uh, on to the rogue. Okay. Ten. All right, so let's see. I got one square of slippery ice. I gotta jump over, right? Uh, if yeah, you know, or, or try standing on it. It's up to you. Yeah, because you you'd have a square here and then the pit to get over. All right. Well, here's for the ice. Okay, yeah, you're safe. You're trying to jump over the pit, so avoid a skull. And, and then for the pit trap. Uh, you fell right in. <laughs> Tripped over the door jam. <laughs> yeah. The awful's like, hey, not so fast, and. Not so fast. Pick me up. So down to two. Okay, so that ends the rogue's turn. Alchemist. Uh, which room are we gonna go in next? The green room? Yeah, I would I would say so. There's less traps or that to around the doors and everything, so I think it would be the better room. Plus, your uh, alchemist is already there, so he can search the chest. Great, I'll go uh, two spaces straight ahead to the barbarian. And. Uh, search the treasure chest. Okay, so you're searching the room for treasure. 
Alright, the treasure chest contains a potion of healing, which restores up to four lost body points. So we add a healing plus four. But that's not all it contains. It also contains the crystal key. Woo! And there it is. Perfect. Yay, we found Ouch. it. We ah. did. Now everybody doesn't have to run past these stupid things. <laughs> Count Cogfox just redeemed a bonus treasure search for whoever wants it, I guess. Okay, so right now the uh, the wizard is custodian of the crystal key, correct? Yeah. Okay. I'll write that on there. Uh, we have to get back to the stairs and go back up, right? Yep. The center room in the previous quest is where the you think the frozen horror is, because that's the door that was locked. The elf is... Yeah, that's it for the wizard. Elf gets back up. Right? Or is he still out? Maybe I lost count. He fell down, did the turns. Oh yeah, I guess he would still be out. My bad. He was down for so long. Okay. So well, if it stands up now, right? If it's, um, yeah, the knight should go. Yeah, the knight should go. Oh, you're not. Yeah, go on. Just hit there. So you've still got these two two doors over here. You don't know what's beyond the frozen chasm either. Alright, so he jumped the pit, and now I have to check for the ice. Okay, so he's going into the room? Yep. And I got a skull on the ice. Uh -huh. And the second ice tile... Get over. ...is a white shield, and he fell down with the, with the uh, elf. Pile of bodies. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, did you get your card? All right. Back to you guys. And you do have that yeah. bonus treasure search that Count Cogfox uh, redeemed. So that's a safe search for whoever wants it. Oh, the Barbarian can use it right now. Yep. Right. Thanks, Count Cogfox. <laughs> treasure search. Nothing. Well, safe. Sorry about that. Thanks for nothing. He didn't know what it was going to be. You win some, you lose some. The barbarian's going to move in front of that closed door there. Oh, 
rogue. So the rogue will move straight down. Well, one over and then straight down below the wizard and one space forward to the next to the barbarian. Alright. Is that it? <clears throat> this is our last round, by the way. So, any actions or, or not? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, search for secret doors. Yeah, it's worth a shot. All right, search for secret doors. All right, no secret doors found. All right. The elf is going to take the uh, potion of dexterity and guarantee that pit jump. Okay. And put, put him down next to the treasure chest. jumps over okay right there in front of the treasure chest yep and then the knight is gonna have to try to just jump the pit trap shield Uh, he's gonna go, I guess, the neck, uh, above the Barbarian. That's it for the hero's turn. Alright, so next time it'll be Zargon's turn to draw a card. So everybody remember we ended on Zargon's turn. And next Saturday, I should be good for the same time. Well, for our old, our usual time, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Twitch.tv slash HeroQuest fans. So that would be July 22nd. Zargon. And I will happily do another session, of course, on July 29th. But then the following weekend, that first week in August, I will be at Gen Con. And so we won't have any streams. The strange bus is around and he wants to stream, of course. That's up to him, but um, I don't think I'm going to have as good quality <laughs> internet to stream remotely. But we'll see. I mean, ideally, I'd be letting you know about anything, you know, any uh, news from Gen Con. But maybe not, not till the evening. So thanks a lot, guys. It was a lot of fun to celebrate with you uh, here today. Uh, we can do Rise of the Dread and stuff <clears throat> some other time. Um, any closing thoughts before we end the stream and do our raid? Uh, Glad I was actually able to get on for a change. Yeah, good to have you. What were you saying, Jacer? I said, is Strange Bus on? Uh, we can take a raid. Or... He, did, he did mention something about streaming, didn't he? Yeah, that he was prepping the stream. Okay. So he's probably been streaming this whole time. Well, I'll uh, take a snapshot here of what we've got and then get set for the raid. So everybody who's here, thank you for joining us and HeroQuest fans. Uh, it'll probably take a while to put that video up because I've just been uploading so many things. I'm just kind of tired. But um, it, it will eventually show up. Usually it's like on Monday, 3.30 is a typical time for this. Because, I mean, this is just our awesome game. This is not Rise of the Dread Moon news. So nobody's clamoring for it. But it was great to see a lot of people doing EuroQuest events. And I hope that encourages more people. Because, I mean, uh, people like uh, Shelfside. I mean, he talked about EuroQuest several times. And it's like actually doing a game. It's like, it's pretty cool. You know, you may play in your home, but just like showing people how much fun it can be is a good thing. 
So, all right, thanks everybody once again. Let me just jump in here. Wish you a good rest of your weekend. Hey. Thanks to uh, Jace for always being able to. <laughs> yeah. Well, looks like we got a couple of choices. So I, I think Tabletop Minions doesn't allow raids. I think we did Automus Prime already. Yeah, Strange Bus is doing Alien Fire Team Elite. So we've also got El Funko, but Strange Bus is a friend, so we'll go for him first. The spirit of today was great. I agree, Fubar. Thanks. So shout out to all our friends, and thanks to Avalon Hill for making it a success. All right, we'll just stop the stream here and do our raid.